praises. Okay, so again, tonight's topic is called Spiritual Vampires, Chronicles <coughs> of Slick Nigs. Chronicles of Slick Nigs. All right. Okay, so we're going to open up with the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. Galatians 1 and 6. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel that mm. ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And to another gospel. So the apostle Paul was writing to, was writing to the church in Galatia. These are Israelites. The Galatians are Israelites. Give me that in First Peter's 1 and 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. We're coming back here. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So the apostle Peter is writing to the strangers that are scattered throughout these lands. One of those lands is Galatia. Go ahead. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So the Apostle Peter was writing to the Israelites because he says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So the strangers that are scattered in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, these are elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Give me that in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Let's see who the elect is that the Apostle Peter is writing to. Isaiah 45, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Come on. For Jacob, my servant's sake, mm -hmm. and Israel, mine elect. And what? And Israel, mine elect. And Israel, mine elect. So the Israelites, the, the Israelites, we are God's elect. Okay? So go back to where was that? First Peter 1 and 2. Again. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Read. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. You to see that thing? It says elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. The elect. The elect is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So the Apostle Peter was writing to the churches because we were scattered all over Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Some of these lands were scattered in. One of those lands, the subject matter is Galatia. So go back to the book of Galatians now. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 again. Actually, read verse 2. Galatians 1, verse 2. You know what? Read Galatians 1 and 1. One Galatians 1 and 1 and 2. Then we're going to jump to verse 6. Galatians chapter 1 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and Read. God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Come on. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. You see that thing? And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. So you can, give me that in Romans 11 and 1. You know what? Mm, give me Romans 9. Romans 9. Here's another precept that you can use. I'm still on topic. Pay attention. Romans 9, start at verse 1. Romans 9, verse 1. Romans 9, verse 1. Come on. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So the Apostle Paul is saying, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. So what he's saying is, what is he saying? He's saying he's what? He's got the spirit of the Most High God on him. He's speaking in the Holy Ghost. You understand? Come on. Verse 2. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I could wish... That myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. For my, my kinsmen. For my brethren. For my brethren. Remember, the letter that he writes into the church in Galatia, he says, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. So we need to know who's Paul's brethren. Go ahead. 
for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. My brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, according to bloodline. Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? So who is Paul's brethren in the book of Galatians? The 12 tribes of Israel. So go back to Galatians 1 verse 2 again. Galatians chapter 1 verse 2. Read. All the brethren which are with me unto the churches of unto the churches of Galatia. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Because guess what? You had churches, you had men and women, you had men particularly um, during the time of the apostles that were going to various churches to do what? To pervert the gospel of Christ. Mainly the scribes and Pharisees and their spies. That's what they was doing. Perverting the gospel of Christ to what? To, to, to make sure that they're still teaching our people to what? To still be in the old covenant, not move on to the new covenant under Christ. So here the apostle Paul is writing to the church of Galatia because there were certain men crept in unawares to what? To coming up with what? New dumb doctrines. You understand? Some breakdowns. Read that again, verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Read. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And to another gospel, because they came with the scriptures, you understand? But they were teaching another gospel contrary to what which was taught by the apostles. Read. Which is not another. You see that thing right there? Which is not another. We use this verse for the Christian church, but mainly it was talking about wicked, wicked Israelites that was going around the churches to what? To introduce new doctrines. That's why the apostles had to come behind them and write letters to them say, listen, if anybody comes, if, if there's anybody that comes there, you understand, saying they, they've got some breakdown, listen, don't listen to them. They are not sent by us. Okay, come on. Which is not another. Which is but not David, another because they came with the Bible. Read. But they be some the trouble you mm. and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see that thing? But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So we're going to go over that this day. You understand? That's why tonight's topic is called Chronicles of Slick Nicks. Because the Slick Nicks now, they come with a Bible with fringes and a bottle of blue. And they deceive our sisters. Read that again, verse 6. Verse 7 again. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. Read. Which is not another. Mm -hmm. But there be some that trouble you and Read. would pervert the gospel of Christ. And there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Watch this. Now, hmm, could you give me the book of Isaiah 28 verse 10? Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10. That's why I need you sisters to study. You sisters, you need to study. Stay sharp in the scriptures. Okay? Um, especially you unmarried sisters. Mm, even the married ones too, by the way. Let me not, I must count them. The sisters, married or unmarried, this class is for you. In fact, a good spirit must be in such that every class that comes out pertains to you. That's a good spirit you must have. Isaiah 28 verse 10, let's start there. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10. Come on. For precept must be upon precept. For precept must be upon precept. Those that precept must be upon precept is written in verse 9. Read verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall God teach his knowledge? What is God's knowledge? The commandments. Come on. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand his doctrine? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are what? Drawn them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are weaned from the milk, that those are the ones that the most High God is going to what? He's going to teach them his knowledge. He's going to make to understand his doctrine. Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk and mm -hmm. drawn from the breasts. And drawn from the breast, meaning the Old Covenant, New Testament, Old Testament, 
they read it all. Why they are not, and they apply it. You understand? Read on. Watch this. For precept must be upon precept. So those, hold on, those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts, precept must be upon precept. Those that are weaned from the those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, precept must be upon precept. Read. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Come on. Line upon line. Here read. a little and there a little. Come on, read on. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. That goes into what? That goes into the Bible being translated in multiple languages. The languages of our captivity. You understand? Like, give me that book of Acts real quick. Just want to explain that. Acts chapter 2, start of verse 1. Acts 2 verse 1. Then we're going to jump. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. And when the day of Pentecost was fully came, was mm. fully come. Come on. They were all with one accord in one place. They were all in one accord in one place on the Feast of Pentecost. Jump down to verse 6 now. Acts chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Now when you know this what? Start was verse 5. Uh, Hold on. Start of verse 4. Read verse 4. Hmm. Read verse 3. Acts chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as mm. of fire. Read. And it sat upon each of them. When it says cloven tongue, it means diverse tongues. Diverse tongue. Cloven means diverse. Read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Meaning the spirit of the Most High God was upon them. Read. And began to speak with other tongues. You see that thing? They began to speak with other tongues. Because that's why it says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues, meaning diverse tongues. So these diverse tongues is the other tongues, other than what? Other than the language that was spoken in where? In Jerusalem, which is primarily Hebrew. Go ahead. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance, meaning the ability to speak these cloven tongues, the language of their brothers and sisters that, are grow, that have grown up in other lands, speaking other languages like today. Read. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. So who was in Jerusalem during the Feast of Pentecost? And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. Jews. Jews was at the Feast of Pentecost. Come on. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation under heaven, because we were scattered, what? Uh, we were scattered among all nations on earth. Read. Now, when this was noised abroad, mm -hmm. the multitude came together and were confounded, Come because on. that every man heard them speak in his own language. You see that thing? That was the miracle. Every man, meaning what? We, we in South Africa, we go to Jerusalem. They speak Hebrew, but we speak Tswana, Peri, Tsonga, whatever. When we get there, the apostles in Jerusalem, they would be speaking the languages of our captivity. You understand? The stammering lips in another tongue. The tongue outside of them, what? The, the language that the Lord gave us, which is Hebrew. Read. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You see that thing? He says, Behold. So they were amazed and marveled because that was the miracle. Behold, are not all these which speak, which speak Galilean? Come on, Galileans, read. Because the primary language in Galilee was what? Hebrew. Come on. And how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? That's the key right there. You see, verse 8 is the key. So the other tongues in verse 4, the cloven tongues in verse 3 is clarified where? In verse 8. It says, and how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born meaning what you were born speaking peri or tonga whatever when you get to jerusalem guess what the apostles are speaking peri tonga etc that was the miracle you understand so go back isaiah 28 verse 11 isaiah chapter 28 verse 11 for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people you see that thing? For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Us. Read on. Verse 12. 
to whom he said, This is the rest with which he may cause the weary to rest. The rest is talking about the Bible. The Bible is our rest. He says, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Read. And this is the refreshing. The Bible yes. refreshes our spirits. The Bible is there to refresh our spirits. You understand? So we can get rid of the issues we've got and repent. Read. Yet they would not, they would not hear. You see that thing? Yet they would not hear because of what? Pride. They still wouldn't hear it. They still didn't want to humble down to what the Bible is saying. But you see from verse 9 to verse 11, is talking about what? Those that are applying the scriptures, those that are what? Those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, precept will be upon precept. But watch this. Those that would not hear when the Bible is supposed to what? To be the arrest, to, to refresh them. He says, yet they would not hear. Here's what's going to happen to those, that bunch. Verse 13. Watch this. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept. They also have precepts. They've got precepts too. He says, but the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept. Go ahead. Precept upon precept. Precept upon line precept. Up. Read. Line upon line. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. You see that thing? That they might fall backward and be broken and ensnared and taken. Because what? They are not applying the commandments. So guess what? They also will have precepts to justify the things that they're going to do and or say. They also have precepts. But because what? He says, yet they would not hear. They also going to have precepts. The reason why I'm bringing this out is that, sisters, you're going to find men that will have the Bible in their hand, bought of blue fringes and all of that, okay? With the Bible and... Guess what? They're not going to apply the scriptures, but they also, they will have precepts. They will have breakdowns too. You understand? So if you are a simp, sister, guess what? Here's what's going to happen. Give me that in uh, 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. 2 Timothy 3 verse 6. You know what? Mm, before you get me that, give me 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. 2 Peter 3 verse 15. Watch this. Same thing that we read in Isaiah 28, verse 13. The apostle Peter talked about the same thing. Watch this. 2 Peter 3, verse 15. Read that. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Read. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. This is the Apostle Peter explaining to us about the Apostle Paul, how he wrote things. You understand? He wrote things difficult to understand because what? To fulfill scripture. Read. As also in all his epistles. In all his epistles, meaning in all his letters. Come on. Speaking in them of these things. The in things which... that he wrote. The things that the Apostle Paul wrote to the various churches. One of them being the Church of Galatia. Read. In which are some things hard to be understood. Mm -hmm. Come on. Which they that are unlearned and unstable which they, rest. Wait. Which, which, which they that are what? In which, which they that are unlearned. 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 They that are unlearned, meaning what? They are not weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. They are unlearned. Read. Which they that are unlearned. And unstable rest. They are double-minded. When he says unstable, they are double-minded. They rest. They wrestle with the scriptures. Okay? The understanding thereof. Read. As they do also the other scriptures. Mm -hmm. Unto their own destruction. You see that thing? As they do also the other scriptures. The other scriptures, you talk about what? The Old Testament scriptures. You understand? As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Read on. Verse 17. Come on. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. 
meaning what? Fall from the, uh, the true understanding that you was given. That's why it says, ye, ye, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, because you was taught these things. Beware, he says, beware, lest ye also, you see that, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, meaning what? The true understanding of the gospel, the true spirit of Christ. Precept upon precept, line upon line. And what's the secret source? Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. This is the secret source right here. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Good understanding have all they that do his commandments. You see that thing? A good understanding, that's the key right there. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So guess what? Those that don't do his commandments, they also going to have precepts too. And they will deceive the hearts of the simple. They will deceive the hearts of the simple. Because it's going to sound good and all of that. But guess what? Inwardly, they are full of deceit. They are full of BS. Watch this. Give me second 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 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Okay? You know what? Go back to Galatians 1, verse 7. Galatians 1, verse 7 again for me. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. Read. Which is not another, mm -hmm. but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. He says, there be some that, that will doubt, some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Timothy now. 2 Timothy 3. Verse 6. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Come on. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Read verse 6 again. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. And lead and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. So now we need to understand what type of so what sorts of men are these? He says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses, they creep into silly women's houses. You understand? Okay, and led captive and lead captive silly women. You see, these this sister is not studying, this sister does not apply the scriptures, she don't seek counsel. You understand? It says lead captive silly women laden with sins. Because the, 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 the slick Nick knows how to spot a simple sister. Let me say that again to you, sister. Pay attention. A slick Negro, he knows how to spot a silly sister. He knows that one don't study. That one you can see she's a simp. They want those ones. They will spot you out and say that one right there. That one right there. She's the one. I want that one. Okay, read that part again. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Read. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, mm -hmm. led away with diverse lusts. So you're going to be led away with diverse lusts because the, simp, the slick Nick, he has discovered that you are a simp. Okay. He discovered that's a simple sister right there. You understand? That's a simple sister. She's she is what? She is thirsty. You understand? She all of that. She will pick up mm, that sister right there. And guess what? The slick Negro, he's got game. Don't get it twisted, sister. Just because you see a bottle of blue, and I don't think the Negro is about the Bible. You understand? That's why it says they creep into houses. What is the characteristic? What is what is the driving factor in the slick neck? Jump up to verse 4. Watch this. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 4. You know what? Start at verse 2. Hmm. Start at verse 2. Watch this. Start at verse 2. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be what? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Meaning what? They just, everything is just about them, okay? For men shall be lovers of their own. They, are, they don't care about the nation. They don't care about the nation of Israel. They care about themselves. You understand? They are not nation-minded. Mm -mm. Read on. 
for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Really? Covetous. Covetous. These are characteristics of a slick nig. Okay, come on. Covetous. Mm -hmm. Boasters. Boasters. They are proud because guess what? They'll say one thing, but when you examine the script, they doesn't, it doesn't line up. Boasters. Go ahead. Covetous. Boasters. Mm -hmm. Read. Proud. proud. You see that thing? Proud. Proud. They don't apply what is written. Read. Blasphemous. Blasphemous. Guess what? Especially you sisters, right? You sisters, um, married or not married, this applies to you. You sisters, you a Negro is doing things that are not lining up with the scripts. You understand? And they be and you can see they be telling, no, don't tell leadership. You are simp. They are telling you, no, no, don't tell your fathers. That's really the, the mind pro. That's the thought process. Don't tell your fathers. Don't tell your father that he said, oh, don't tell your father. Why? Because that's a slick nig. And guess what? You sisters that are unmarried, you are proving, and the nig is doing things that you, and they be telling you, you know, don't tell leadership everything. You know, you must, you must, listen, that's a slick nig. That's a slick nig. And you, and you, because you are disobedient, you are rebellious, you're going to follow behind that. And the slick nig, they know, you see, if I, I, I need to isolate them. They will isolate you. Next thing, you don't see counsel. You don't say nothing. You understand? Because you are thirsty. Because the slick nig can see you are thirsty. You understand? And guess what? That's where, that's where back, 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 uh, backdoor marriages happen. Backdoor marriages when, when the slick nig will tell you, don't talk to your father. No, no, don't do that. Just you, me, yeah. You, you and me, yeah. Don't, don't talk. You see that thing? They are trying to isolate you because they what? They know that leadership don't tolerate BS. They know that. That's why they will say stuff like that to you. You understand? Because you are a simp, you don't study. You understand? You don't talk to your fathers that the Lord has set over you. The slick nig will draw you out. Before you know it, we don't see you no more. Okay? Read that again. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, mm -hmm. covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. You see that part right there? Disobedient to parents. And that's another thing because the slick nig, he don't believe that the men that the Lord has set up, those are the prophets of the Most High. He don't believe that. And he's, he's going to convince you that you also, you don't believe it. That's why it says disobedient to parents. Because the stuff that I will tell you sisters is the same thing I'll tell my daughters. You understand? Because our job, we must, we must what? Our job is to make sure that you are looked after. You understand? And we have to be harder on you sisters to teach you to identify red flags because when things go wrong, you're going to be one left. You're going to be left holding the bag. I mean the baby, excuse me. You understand? You're going to be left with that or a disease. Okay? So when we give you counsel, sis, don't do X, Y, and Z, you go outside of that, disobedient to parents, and a slick nig will draw you out. You understand? Come on. Unthankful, unholy. Unthankful, unholy. Read on. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Because why? When they want to go around leadership, that's not with that's without natural affection. Because guess what? According to the scriptures, how must things be? Things must be in such a way that things must be done decently and in order. You understand? The same way you would go to a parent to speak about, I want, my, I want to take your daughter in marriage. And guess what? The father must screen you. You must be screened and scrutinized to see, is this man really like, is he fit to take my daughter? You understand? Things of that nature, because fathers will be able to, to what? To be able to sift a slick nig from the mist. They will pick them out. That's a slick nig right there. You understand? But you, when you go around the fathers, guess what? The slick nig, that's exactly what they want. Read. Without natural affection, mm -hmm. two spirits. 
truce breakers. You understand? They cannot hold up to agreements. Read on. False accusers. False accusers. False accusers. They lie. Read. Incontinent. Incontinent. Come on. Fierce. Fierce. Emotional. Fierce. You see that part right there? Sasha Fierce. You know that? Yeah, I think Beyonce put something out like that many years ago. Sasha Fierce. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Yeah. Fierce. Read on. Despises of those that are good. Despises of those that are good. You know what that means when it's despises of those that are good? Sl a slick nig hates, in, a, hates a brother, you understand? Or a sister that is in the script. They hate that type of brother. Because the brother will check you. He say, bruh, mm -mm. bruh, you're out of order. Sis, no, no, we don't do X, Y, and Z. We do this. What does the scripture say? You understand? But he says, despises of those that are good. Meaning when you, when you talk to them, they talk to you. You are always in the script. It annoys the hell out of them. You understand? Come on. Traitors. Traitors. Meaning what? These, they are truth breakers. You understand? They are traitors. Read. Traitors. Um, meaning what? Proud. Come on. High-minded. You can't correct them nothing. Come on. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You see, you see that thing? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You see, all of these traits that we just read here, these are the traits of a slick nigga. A slick negro, he's, these are, but they know how to hide them very well, though. They hide them very well. And as if you, if, if as a sister, you don't listen to counsel, you don't follow the counsel that your fathers give you, guess what's going to happen? A slick nigga will be able to hide these things. You're not going to see them until it's too low, until, until you are in a body bag. Because that's the point. They creep into houses, it says what? And lead captive. They're going to what? They're going to capture your mind. They lead captive silly women laden with sins. Led away with diverse lusts. You see that part right there? They are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. It's about pleasure. You understand? That means they are not about long term. For them, it's not long term. You understand? But they can play the game very well. That no, 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 it's long term and all that. Okay? It's long term. They're going to do all the right quote-unquote things. But you need to be able to pay attention, ask counsel. When you pick something that don't make sense, listen, when you don't do that, and guess what? They'll tell you, no, those don't tell them niggas not everything. And they'll be telling us, they'll be saying niggas. Because they don't believe we're the men of the Lord. They don't believe this Bible, most important. They don't believe it. They are doubtful. You understand? They like to debate. They like to go back and forth. That's a slick nig. That's a slick They don't believe the Bible. Watch them niggas. Watch them niggas. Excuse me. Watch them niggas. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a acronym, you know. You don't have to say niggas. 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 Watch them niggas. You sisters, you must watch them niggas. Okay? Read on. That's five. Mm -hmm. Having a form of godliness. They have a form of godliness. They have a Bible. They've got a, they've got, they've got uh, fringes and a bottle of blue. They attend the Sabbath. So on and so forth. Go ahead. But denying the power thereof. Come on. From such turn away. You see that thing? But denying the power thereof from such turn away. When it says denying the power thereof, give me that in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 real quick. But denying the power thereof. Watch this. What power are they denying? The slick nicks. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Come on. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power oh. of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Read. The Jew first and also to the Greek. Ish, you don't sound correctly, you know. You sound fire. sound like you're speaking out of a bottle. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. That's the key right there. The gospel of Christ is the power. Is the power of salvation unto everyone that believeth. Give me that in Sarah 32, 24. This one means to believe. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, verse 24. Watch this. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. You see that part right there? He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. Meaning what? They are applying what is written. They apply the scriptures. You understand? So for to those that apply, guess what? They are not denying the power. They understand the power. They say that there's pa power is in application. Power is in application. When you apply, that's the power. Because guess what? You're working on yourself. Go back to where he was at now. Okay. Romans 1 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. First and also to the Greek. So now it says, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Meaning what? The power only comes in when you apply. You understand? That's what it means to everyone that believeth. It is the power of God to everyone that applies what is written. Read on. Verse 17 now. Verse 17. Come on. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Mm -hmm. From faith to faith. As faith. it is written, the just shall live by faith. You see that part? It says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Only when you apply it, then the righteousness of God will be revealed. You're going to be that light that shines before men, that they may see your good works. What is the good works? Application. You're going to be applying what is written to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. You understand? He says, the just shall live by faith, meaning you apply it. The faith is, is shown within your application. Because your faith, your faith is proved by your works. You understand? Go back to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 again. 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. Read. Having a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. You see what he's saying, sisters? He says, from such men, he says, turn away from those men. Because that's a slick nick. They have a form of godliness. Their fringes and a bottle of blue. You understand? They speak well, but denying the power they hope, they don't apply the Bible. He says, from such, stay away. That's a slick neck. Okay, come on. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. You see that thing? So he says, because this sort of men, we read the characteristics from verse 2 down. He says, they are, these are the ones that creep into houses. Because verse 5 tells you, says, they have a form of godliness. So that's a smoke screen. That's why it says they have a form of godliness. Because you are going to be impressed by what? what? By the outward appearance. But because you're not proving, the sister is also thirsty. And you understand? She's burning. Guess what happens? You're not going to see the fact that he's denying the power thereof. How are you going to know to turn away? To stay away from that slick neck. You're not going to know. Because they have a form of godliness. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Chapter 20, 27. Sirach 27 and verse. Maybe verse 3 what I want. Let me see. Let me see. No, no. Sirach 23, 27 verse 6. Sirach 27 verse 6. Ecclesiasticus chapter 27 verse 6. Mm -hmm. The fruit declareth if the tree have been dressed. It says the fruit, the fruit. We know what this fruit is. That's the fruit of the spirit. It says the fruit declares if the tree, the tree is what is a similitude to make reference to man. Okay. It says if the what, if the tree have been dressed, if the tree have been well dressed, so is the what? Come on, read on. The fruit declares if the, if the tree have been dressed, mm -hmm. so is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of a man. You see that thing? It says, so is the utterance, meaning their conversation. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of men. Meaning what? With their conversation. Their conversation. 
Yeah, yeah, they might be pulling, a, throwing a couple of precepts here and there, but really uh, they are not lining up. You understand? So that's why it says they have a form of godliness. They know some scriptures. You understand? They can, they can wiggle their way around your mind. That's why it says, let lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, because it's so, so is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of men. Meaning what? You need to be able to prove them, and it takes time to do that thing. Especially for you sisters, you need to take longer to prove as, to prove a brother. You must. You must make sure that you go through your checks and balances, check with leadership, so we can be able to weed out a slick nick. But if you are thirsty, guess what? He knows it. If you are thirsty, if you have a low self-esteem, the slick nig, he knows it. The slick, they look for those type of women. You know, she's got a low self-esteem. You know, she's not confident, so on and so forth. You know, she's not near, yeah, she's not sure of herself. She don't study. She's a simp. Guess what? The slick nig will weed you out. You understand? That's why the tools that we bring out, a lot of the time sisters take things personal. You don't like leadership when they say certain things. Yeah, I know I say certain things sometimes. But it's what? It's for your protection. It's because we care for you. We don't want you to end up with a slick nig. That's why we bring out the things the way we bring them, the raw, unedited, unfiltered. We deal with reality. We're going to hit you with reality in your face. Why? To help you. You understand? To identify a slick nig. Watch this. Um, read on. Verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Praise no man before thou hearest before thou hearest him speak. Read. The trial of men. You see that thing? His trial is his conversation. His trial is his conversation. And more importantly, if you notice that, you know what? The scriptures, the scriptures are coming out, right? We have many classes, but the conversation of this slick nick right here is not lining up with the scriptures. Then you know, mm, that's a red flag right there. That's a slick negro. That's a slick nick. You must be able to identify a slick nick, sisters. You must merit and unmerit because you might be with a brother. You are married. You understand? But the nick is hiding. That nick is hiding. The only way the nig will pop out, you must be applying the scriptures. You must be able to be in the scriptures. You must apply. Because the nig can be hiding. Hiding behind the bottle of blue. You understand? They can be hiding behind that and a Bible in their hand. You're not going to be able to cause what? You were in a rush. You, are, you was rushing. You understand? Your, your spirit Gonzalez. Read that again, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 27 verse 7. Mm -hmm. There is no man before thou hearest him speak. Read. For this is the trial of men. For this is the trial of men. How do you try him? Give me that in 1 John 4 verse 1. Because this is how you try a slick nick. This is how you do it. Because brothers be slick. These brothers got game, sisters. Understand that. When they see that you are a simp, guess what? They got you. First John chapter four, start of verse one. First John chapter four, verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit. What did the Bible say? Believe not every spirit. It says believe not every spirit, meaning what? Don't be hasty to credit him. Hold on, wait, wait. Let me see something. Mm. Give me Sirach 19 verse four. We coming back. Sirach 19, verse 4. Ecclesiastes 19, verse 4. Come on. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. He is what? He is light-minded. You see that thing, sisters? Don't be hasty to credit. Don't be hasty to credit a brother. You understand? He says, he that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. Meaning what? You are a simp. Because as a slick nig, you're going to be able to pick up that's a simp sister right there. You understand? That's why we tell you, sisters, don't be a simp. We give you tools to study. You understand? To build your spirits up so you can be able to identify a slick nig. 
Read that again, verse 4. Ecclesiastes 19, verse 4. Uh -huh. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. Read. And he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. Because the one that, that sinneth with, which will offend against his own soul is, the, is that sister that is hasty to give credit to a slick neck because they are moving too fast. You understand? Because the sister is thirsty, whatever, whatever. Guess what? A slick neck, they're going to body bag you. Understand that? They will body bag you. And then after that, they bounce. You understand? Okay, watch this. Go back. First Timothy, I mean, first, first, first John chapter 4, verse 1. Read that again. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Mm -hmm. But try the spirits whether they what? are God. But try the spirits. But try the spirit. You try the spirit by the spirit. The only way you can be able to make sure that you're not, you're not going to give him too credit too quickly, you must try him with the spirit. Because remember, it says they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such stay away. Stay away from that type of brother. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Beloved, believe not every spirit, Come on. but try the spirit whether they are of God. He says, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Come on. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. So there's a video that is on YouTube now dealing with false prophets. You can you, you know where to go to identify a false prophet. I'm not going to go to that scripture. Okay? You must watch them videos so you can learn. All right? It says, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Go back to 2 Timothy now, chapter 3, verse 5 again. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such but, turn away. But denying the power thereof from, from such turn away. Stay away from that type of brother. Read on. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Mm -hmm. Led away with diverse lusts because they can see. That this sister is not studying. She's not applying the scriptures. You understand? They can pick you up. A slick negro. Listen. Because remember. You sisters. You tend to forget that. These men have been in the world. They are coming from the world. And they come in Israel sick. This is a hospital. When they come in. They are sick. But some, some negroes. They hide their symptoms. Let me say that again. Some negroes. They hide their symptoms. Because guess what? That's a slick nick. He does not want to be found out. But guess what? There is a God. They try to hide their symptoms so that you don't pick up that that's a slick negro right there. That's a slick nick. They hide their symptoms so that you cannot identify them. You understand? Read on. Verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. Ever learning. And oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Wait, wait. Read that slow. Hmm. Second Timothy, Come on. Chapter seven. Read. Ever learning. Ever learning. They are always studying, but they don't apply what they are studying. You see, they have a form of godliness, but denying the power. They, they don't apply. Mm -mm. They are always studying, but they don't apply what is written. Read. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They never come to the knowledge of the truth. You know why? Because they don't apply. So they will never receive that power to grow. You understand? To identify the, the issues that are within themselves. Because you must know, everybody knows themselves, but some people deny to recognize themselves. Some people, they just ignore it. As long as they ignore it, it will just go away by itself. No, no, it won't go away. You understand? It will be on you like stink on cheese. You understand? flies to a pile of doo-doo it's gonna be on you you understand and if you leave it long enough it will what it will push out a stench we're gonna smell it 
in the spirit of Christ. And guess what? Your, your, your stench will air you out. Hmm, that's a slick nig right there. He's a slick nig. That's the point. That's a slick nig right there. You understand? So read that again, verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are always studying, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You understand? Never. They will, they will study, but they don't apply. Never come. He says, you see that part right there? It says, never. I didn't make this up. It says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Never. So the, the key word there is never. Never. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's the key. Right there. Watch this. Give me. Hmm, let me see if I want to go there or not. Give me Sarah 36, 24. Now, remember what we read in Galatians 1. Because some of you forgotten already. Go back to Galatians 1 verse 7. Galatians chapter 1 verse 7. Galatians chapter 1 verse 7. Read. Which is not another. Mm -hmm. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see that thing? It says, but there be some which will trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, let's deal with that. Give me Sirach 36, 24. Hmm. Let me show you, sisters, where things go wrong. You understand? Because slick a slick nick will use these scriptures to do what? To destroy you. You understand? They will use these scriptures right here to destroy you. And I'm talking to those that are married and those that are unmarried, you sisters. Married or not married, this class is for you. Watch this. Sarah 36, 24. Is for you to identify a slick nig. Read that. This chapter 36, verse 24. Read. a position. Mm -hmm. Himself and a pillow of rest. I don't know what's going on with the line. Are you using your phone or your computer? Because mm, the sound is very poor. Read that again, verse 24. Uh, switch off your Wi-Fi and use your phone. Your phone's data. Okay, keep reading. Yes, sir. Sirach 36, 24. Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 24. Uh -huh. He that gets at the wife, begin at the position. He that what? Help like he that gets at the wife, beginneth a position. Come on. A help like unto himself, mm -hmm. and a pillar of rest. Read. Where no hedges, there the position is spoiled. And he Read that, that has again. no wife. Read that again. Ecclesiastes 36 verse 25. Mm -hmm. Where no hedges, there the position is spoiled. Read. And he that has no wife, Will wander up and down morning. They will do what? Will wander up and down morning. They will wander up and down morning. Hmm. Read the verse again for me. Read verse 24 again. Ecclesiastes 36, verse 24. Come on. He that gets at the wife, begin at the position. Mm -hmm. He help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. And a what? And a pillar of rest. And a pillar of rest. Hey, that's some heavy stuff right there. A pillar of rest. Watch this. Give me Sarak 36, 24. Read that again for me. He that gets at the wife, begin at the position, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. Now, I want to deal with the scripture. You see this scripture right here? This is where slick nigs. You see, slick nigs will use this scripture right here to destroy a sister, to suck the life out of a sister. Read it again, verse 24. I'm going to stay on this for a while. Okay? Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Read. He that gets the wife beginneth a position. Read. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So I'm going to, you men, what does this scripture mean? When it says, he that getteth a wife beginneth a position. What does that mean? 
What does that mean? Um, let me hear Brother Zolani. What does that mean? He that gets the wife beginneth a possession. Shalom, sir. All oh, praises. Yes, sir. So my, my understanding of it, sir, um, is like you've explained it before, is that you you begin you you begin you, you get a position as in somebody who will help you, uh, not a pillar of stress, but a pillar of rest, who will assist you when when not only in in good times but in hard times more especially sir who won't yes. always be nagging oh that that's correct that's correct but the point i want here is says he that getteth a wife beginneth a position i just want that part oh Explain yes that sir. Part to me. Uh -huh. yes sir so um in 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 the case where in especially in in, in with regards to um the today's topic sir um, it can be it, it can be interpreted in a, in a part way in a way that a man feels that she, he owns his wife uh, and then as a result um, wants to be controlling over him well over her sorry uh, since the scripture says um, he that gets the wife beginneth a possession okay 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 I'll come back to you uh let me hear brother bezalel let me hear you uh sister Tabo. before brother bezalel you answer the question sister Tabo, can you can you hear the class hello mm. sir okay all praises can you hear the class properly yes sir okay good good i need you to pay attention also okay brother bezalel what does that mean he that beginneth a wife he that getteth a wife beginneth a position what does that mean? Uh, it means uh, since if you get a wife. Hold so on. Since... Wait, wait, wait. Shalom. What the hell is this? What's wrong with you, brothers? No etiquette, no order. What is wrong with these brothers? You brothers know you are a military camp, right? Sisters, that, you see those are characteristics. Yeah. They are coming, by the way. Mm. Okay, let me hear you. Speak again, yeah. Let me hear you. Let's start over. Shalom, sir. All oh, praises to the Most High. What's your oh, answer praise. to this? You're saying uh, if you get a wife, uh, when the scripture says you begin a position, meaning mm -hmm. that she's now your responsibility because she's now in your possession, meaning you have to like take care of her. Everything that the, the, her father used to do, it's now in your possession. I like that thing. I like that thing right there. So... Uh, Brother Zolani, you, you said something there which was, you know, it worried me. Because uh, being a position, yes, she, yes, you own her. She's yours. She is your position. Because you brothers don't get it twisted. Yes, your wife, she is your position. Okay? She is your position. You understand? But that, that does not mean you must abuse the sister. Because that's the part, the, the part I want to deal with. Brother Bezalel said that um, now you need to what? You need to take care of her. So the same way you have a, you get a car, you take care of the car, you wash it, you take it for service and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Your wife is like that. I'm not saying your wife is a car. I'm just giving an example. Okay, in case there's some simp, simp nicks or in here. It means that you take care of what her father used to do. What the father used to do, because this came out in class. Her father, what their father used to do, now you take care of her. You understand? You must cherish and nourish her. Okay? But some brothers, them slick nigs, they're going to use this verse right here to abuse you. You understand? To abuse you. And that's the part I want to deal with. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Read. He that gets the wife beginneth the position. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So when it says you begin it, you see the key is beginneth. You begin a position. You get a wife, you begin a position. The key word is beginneth. Because now you, you're going to take care of her 
and the needs that her father used to cover for her. You understand? That's why if you read the book of Tobit, give me Tobit now. Give me Tobit chapter 7 real quick. Tobit chapter 7 verse 13. Watch this. Tobit chapter 7 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then he called his daughter Sarah and he took her by the hand and gave it just seems like he just went from bad to worse. Could you read that again? Tobit, chapter 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to, to, to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father, and he blessed him. You see what he's saying? You see what the parents, we see what the father said? Is that then he called his daughter Sarah and gave to her father and she came to her father and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. Meaning from the father's house to the husband's house. What the father used to do, the husband will now take care of those responsibilities. That's why it says you beginneth a possession, a help like unto yourself and a pillar of rest. So now watch this. Give me that in... Uh, uh, Deuteronomy, no, no, Exodus 21. Give me the book of Exodus, chapter 21. Exodus, chapter 21, and verse. Let's start at verse 10. Exodus 21, verse 10. Read that. Exodus, chapter 21, verse 10. Read. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. So now this goes into, obviously, a, a sister that was was sold, meaning what? To be, was given as a handmaid to a family, which eventually the man that was um, was taking care of her, what the man that she worked for ended up, what? Betrothing her. So, but it's, it's still talking about marriage. So we're not talking about another wife here or multiple wives. No. This is going into, it says, if you take him another wife, her food, this is the part we want to deal with, her food, her raiment, food, clothing, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. You must take care of the sister. You understand? She's your position. You take care of her. You nourish her. You nurture her. You build her up. The two of you build together. Mm -hmm. She's your possession in that, in that sense. Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit, chapter 10, verse 12. Toby 10 verse 12. So you sisters, you must need to be able to identify a slick nig because there be slick negroes up in here. Sarah, give me that in Toby 10 verse 12. Toby 10 verse 12. Read. And he said to his daughter, honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, mm -hmm. which are now thy parents. Read. That I may hear good report of thee. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, the Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see the children, and, and grant that I may see thy children of my daughter Sarah before I die. Really? That I may rejoice before the Lord. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. What did he say? Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Read. Wherefore, do not entreat her. You see that part right there? So when it says, he that begit, get her the wife, beginneth a position, this is what it means right here. I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. Do not abuse her. That's what is going into there. We're going to deal with those different types of abuses. You understand? It says, do not abuse the sister. You understand? That's why it says, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust because she was under the care of her father and mother. Now, the father is giving her daughter, his daughter in marriage to you to become the position because when my daughter is under my roof, she's my position. You understand? She's under my position. We went over at last about this. So this, is, this shouldn't be anything new for y'all. But the point is, she is my position. And then guess what? When she now, when I, when I give my daughter's uh, hand in marriage to you, it, she becomes your position to do what? 
I'm committing my daughter unto thee of special trust. Therefore, do not entreat her evil. You understand? Because some Negroes will take this verse right here and say, you know what? Yeah, now you are my possession now. I'm going to give you some examples. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians 5. Okay? I'm just going to expound on that verse right there. So we get it. So there's no, so you sisters, you need to understand when it says he that beginneth a wife, beginneth a position. So we understand what it means because they be slick nigs. Even after this class, they guess what? Their slick nigs will still be found. So don't lose your guard down and say, no, the classes has come out. When the classes come out, the angels, they activate. Okay? Ephesians 5, verse 28. Watch this. This is the precept to Sirach 20, 36, 25. Come on. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. As their what? As their own bodies. You see what it says right there? It says, you must love your wife as your own body. Remember, it says, a, a, a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Okay, come on. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. You see that thing? He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. So guess what? If you love yourself, you're not going to entreat the sister evil. You understand? You're not going to abuse the sister because of that scripture right there. Yes, she's your position, but you must take care of your position. The same way you have an item that you buy, you understand? You buy a house, you buy a car, whatever. You take care of it. You put insurance on it. You do all those things that are necessary to preserve it and to take care of it. Likewise, your wife, she's your possession. Your job is to take care of this sister. Okay, come on. Verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. You see that thing? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Read. But nourish it and cherish it. You see that part right there? So when it says, he that getteth a wife beginneth a position, read that part right there. It says, but what? But nourisheth and cherisheth it. But nourisheth and cherisheth it. So your job is to nourish that position and to cherish that position. You understand? That's what it means. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. When you get that position, you guess what? You must nourish it and you must cherish it. Read on. Even as the Lord, the church. Even as the Lord, the church, meaning what? Christ versus the 12 tribes of Israel. Because that's what marriage represents. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Sirach. Ecclesiastes 36, 24 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Read. He that gets at the wife, begin at the position. Mm -hmm. He help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. You see that part? A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So you begin that position. You get a wife, you begin a position. Because now you, you, you have learned. Because remember, before you can get that wife, you must have learned how to do what? How to take care of your own house, your spirit, your mind, your body. You understand? You must have known how to do it because we, we will teach you to do so. We teach you how to take care of yourself. Once you know how to do that, Guess what you're going to do? You're going to know how to take care of the position, your wife, when you eventually get married. But if you don't take time to take care of yourself, to apply, 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 apply the scriptures to yourself, you're not going to be able to know how to deal with the next sister, with the sister. Impossible. That's not going to work. I don't care what you say, it's not going to work. That's a recipe for disaster. It's not going to work. If you don't know how to take care of your own self, you will not be able to take care of the system. You won't. You don't know how to examine yourself. How are you going to be able to build the sister up? How are you going to be able to be to lead your, to lead this woman, to guide her, you understand, to teach her, to nourish her? How are you going to do that? You're not going to be able to know how to because you don't know how to do it yourself. You understand? And because you don't know how to do it yourself, Guess what? You will put in a good show. You'll put in a good show and be that slick nig 
that is going to slip through the cracks and this a silly sister will not be able to pick you up. The only time when the silly sister will be able to pick you up is if what? If she goes through, she filters the stuff through leadership. So we can tell, mm, sis, mm, that's, mm, that's not good right there. That's a red flag. Okay? That's a red flag right there. So these are things that we need to examine. You understand? Because some brothers will be abusing the scripture right here because they don't understand the proper, they don't have their proper understanding of the script. Watch this. Give me the book of Galatians 5, verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You see what he's saying? It says, it says, ye have been called unto liberty. That's the grace of Christ. Only use not liberty. Don't use the grace that Christ has given unto us for an occasion to the flesh. Meaning don't abuse it. Don't abuse the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. But by what? But by love do what? But by love serve one another. But by love serve one another. You take care of one another according to the scriptures. You will nourish and cherish that sister. Okay. Galatians 2 verse 21. Watch this. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. Read. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. He says, I do not frustrate the grace, the grace of God. Do not frustrate the grace of the Lord. Meaning don't abuse, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Because you are what? You are taking scriptures out of context because you don't apply. Because the only way you can take scriptures out of context is if when you don't apply. Because a good understanding of all day that what? That do his commandments. If you're not doing the commandments, you will not be able to have a good understanding. And guess what? You're just going to be winging it. And a simple sister will be deceived by you. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus now. 25 verse 22. Because some brothers will say, you are my position now. I own you. You understand? And all of that. But they don't apply the scriptures the way we broke it down. That you must cherish and nourish. That's what it means to begin a possession. Watch this. Sirach 25 is 22. Hmm. Ecclesiastes 25 is 22. Come, come on. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Read it again. Read it again, verse 22. Listen now. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 22. Mm -hmm. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. So now it says a woman, if she maintain her husband, meaning what? This brother right here, this slick nig, he can't keep a job. Yeah, he does have a job, but he doesn't last at the jobs that he gets. He doesn't last. You understand? He's always working in a different company all the time. Okay? You understand? So, well, I'll tell you about me. A man going to be proving my daughter, I want to see that you can keep a job for two years straight, not be moving around. Two years straight. You understand? Two years. Because I want to see if you have commitment issues. I need to test that. You understand? I need to see if you can keep a job for two years straight and you can save money. Well, I need to know that. Because though both of those two things require what? One thing, discipline. Those two things, they require discipline. You understand? Those things, they require discipline. So, guess what? You see that part when it says, a, if a, a woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, that's what's going to happen. A slick nick will what? While they're proving you, they'll have a job. But you're not going to ask, hmm, how long have you, you are working? Yes, I'm working. Okay, how long have you been at this job? Hmm, I've been there for a year. Hmm. The previous company, how long was you? How long was you? How long did you work for? Hmm, uh, six months. Hmm. Okay, just keep asking the questions. They'll tell you exactly who they are. Hmm. 
this right here, this is right here. Mm, we're gonna have stuff. This one is got. He, what does he have? He's got commitment issues. This one, which means he can't keep a job. You're gonna have problems in the marriage. You understand? He does not have discipline. He is not applying himself. He is not improving himself to ready himself to get married. He is not doing that. Okay. Those are the type of things you must ask him. Do you give arms in the body? You must ask, does he give arms? Mm, yes, Eric. Do you give arms in the body? He doesn't give arms. That means he don't believe this truth. He doesn't believe this, the mission. He doesn't believe it. You understand? He don't believe. What type of works do are you doing in the body? Mm, touchy, touchy right there and there. You know, he don't believe this. You understand? He's a slick nig. Because guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up maintaining him. Because guess what? What is he telling you? He's telling you that he's a sloth. He's, a, he's slothful. He doesn't want to do nothing. He's going to expect you to take care of him. And guess what? The Lord says, read that again. Verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 22. Come on. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. You see that thing? Impudence and much reproach. Let's get the definition of impudence. Mm. That's not a regular Negro word, you see. Let's see. Uh -huh. Impudence means disrespect. You understand? It says a, you, a woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger. She's angry. She's bitter. You understand? Impudence. She will disrespect you. Okay? And much reproach. There's not going to be anything good she sees in you because why? You're a sloth. You want this woman to maintain you because guess what? You are a bum. Because if a woman has to maintain you, you are a bum. Okay? You need to be in a position where if, if let's, the two of you here, you must work. The sister must have a job. You must have a job. But guess what? When things go wrong, when let's say she loses a job, whatever the case may be, guess what? You, 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 you now, you're going to have to take care of things. Yeah, the two of you used to have two incomes. Now she can't. Can you still be able to proceed? Can you still be able to take care of her? Because that's the mindset you must have. And these are things that you need to ask the brother. You must. Because you keep pressing on these type of questions. You see, that's, that, that slick nig, that negro, the nig will pop out. You see the nig popping out. Say, hmm, that's a nig right there. He's a nig. You understand? That means you're going to be taking care of it. But the problem is, watch this. Hmm, let's watch a video. Okay. So just to catch everyone up to speed here, okay? So um, this is uh, some documentary called, I think some series called Crew Season. They talk about different topics and all that, right? So, okay, so I'm gonna play the video. They talk about whether income matters in a, in a, in a relationship. Obviously they are not married, they are in the world. So, you know, so, but there's something you can learn from this. You know what I'm saying? So nobody really wants that. So it's all about the mindset. That's the most important thing, the mindset of the person that you're dealing with. If you have a lot of money and you go broke, and I've been there through the struggle, and I personally feel that you have a legitimate reason to be broke, and I have a validation to believe that you will seek wealth again, then I'll hold you down. If you're broke when I meet you, you don't stand a chance. You see what she's saying? He says, if you are broke when I meet you, you don't stand a chance. But a nick, guess what? A nick will flip their way in. Because guess what? We have a silly sister in the midst who don't ask questions because she's horny. She's thirsty. The, the only thing that is in her mind is the D. Okay? Because... What's broke to you? What is defined broke? You make less than double what I make. Less. You hear that, brothers? He says you make less than double than I than what I make. Mm. Oh, hmm. Let's just keep playing. Yes. Okay. 
It's not a, it's not a shit ton. Okay. But I should be making double what I make. That being said, it's because I've held broke men down. I've been played by broke men. You see what she's saying? He says, I've held, this is, this woman, by this is an angry woman. She's angry. You see what it says? Read that again. Sirach 25, 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 22. A woman, Wait. if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. You see what she's saying? It says, I've held broke men down. Um, I've been what? I've been plagued by broke men because she was plagued by a slick neck. You understand? So now she's full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. That being said, it's because I've held broke men down. I've been played by broke men. Okay. And personally, it doesn't pay off. So I won't do it again. And it is what it is. It's not hard to find someone who makes twice what I make. I personally attract people who make like a whole spectrum. That being said, if you are broke and I choose to deal with you, I will be little. You see what she's saying? You brothers hear that? Mm. Yes, so, sir. Let's yes, take back because I know some slick nigs they blocking their ears. La, 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 la. Let me play back. Hard to find someone who makes twice what I make. I personally attract people who make like a whole spectrum. That being said, if you are broke and I choose to deal with you, I will be little. Woo! That's some heavy stuff right like there. Read that again. Sirach 25, 22. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 25, verse 22. Come on. A woman, if she maintains her husband, is full of anger. Impudence and much reproach. You see that thing? She's full of anger, impudence, disrespect. That's why she says, I will belittle you. Okay? She says, she's going to belittle you and much reproach. It is what it is. And I reserve the right to do that. And also, if you want to cheat, cheat at your own risk, I'm apt to ghost you. And it is what it is because men who make more money than me they treat me with that same power dynamic, right? Like, I know that... So that's fair? You think that that's okay? No, absolutely not. Okay. But it's the way of life. You see what you say? But it's, a, it's not okay, but it's the way of life. I Meaning it's the reality of the situation. The brother, on the other hand, he's not a realist. He's an idealist. So, sisters, you also need to invest. That's a slick name. The idealist one is idealistic. It's, the reality is not in the head. You understand? He's not realistic about things. He's idealistic. That's a slick name. That's code to say, I'm a slick name. You understand? That's code to say that. That's a slick name. The idealist. Okay. Let's go to 91. Mm. No, no, let's, let's keep playing. Hell yeah. Finances matter and they matter a lot. Now, this is the man speaking. So, sisters, pay attention. Brother two. Okay, you understand? This, this, this is brothers in the world now. You understand? Give me that in Luke 16, verse 8. Mm. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Watch this. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. No, no, Luke 16. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. And the Lord commended the unjust to it because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. He says they are what? For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. He says they are wiser than the children of light. They are... Mm -hmm. He says they are wiser than the children of light. So these are not keeping the commandments. You understand? These men, they are not keeping God's commandment. But just listen to what they say. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But it's a way of life. Uh, hell yeah. Finances matter and they matter a lot. You see what he, he says? Finances, they matter. And they matter a lot. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. I think it's in Proverbs. No. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19. Watch this. To, to, to a, hold on, to a slick nick, a slick nick, they'll tell you, no, finances don't matter. That's a slick nick right there. Because she's gonna, he's going to be mooching off of you. 
Sisters, a brother be asking you for money mm. while you are proving. Imagine mm. something wrong. First day, you know, first uh, first court courting process already is asking you for money. You know that you have a slick niche in the midst. Book service 18. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Read. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. And through Read. idleness of the hands, and through idleness of the hands, the house chopped through. You see that thing? Because that house is not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna what? It's not gonna hold up. Because you have a slick knee who's gonna mooch off of you, say, I'm your Lord, you must work for me. You must go out, me, I'll stay in the house. You have brothers with mindsets like that, by the way. In Israel, you've got brothers with a mindset like that, say, no, but uh, and they're gonna they're gonna use some dumb analogy. They say, you know what? When you look at the animal kingdom, right? Look at the lion, who's hunting? He says the females are the ones that hunt, and the men are the ones that protect the herd. They're gonna tell you dumb stuff like that. And you as a simp, they say, by the way, brother, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a Judite. You know, I'm a lion from I'm a lion of Judah. I protect the compound when you go and hunt. They're gonna use those examples, and you will believe that thing in your simple-mindedness. You'll believe it. That's a slick nick. Okay, read on. Verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. A feast is made for laughter, and wine make it merry. But money answers all things. No, love answers all things. But money answers all things. But money answers all things. That's in the Bible. Money answers all things. So, brothers, listen. Do not, do not, um, do not, do not believe a sister saying, no, 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 finances don't matter. She's lying. She tells, she's still just in that honeymoon phase. You believe it, you fall for it, and you guess what? You are a slick nick, mm -hmm. and she, she's taking care of you. You don't do nothing. Guess what? Whenever she goes off, or there's, a, if there's an argument in the house, guess what? You're going to be, you're going to hear some conversation. You're going to hear some names like you've never heard them before. You understand? They're going to be calling you a broke-ass nick, a broke-ass nick. You're going to hear that. They're going to call you a bad. That's a broke as nick right there. Every single time when you have an argument, that will always come up. You understand? But a nick is, doesn't think about that. A nick, he's, the only thing he's thinking about is the game. You understand? You know I'm saying? Because as a man, me coming into a relationship and my finances is not in order, I'm not going to be in the right headspace to make that relationship successful. You see, you see what he's saying? These are children of, of not these are not the children of life. But just listen to what they are saying. This is not you know what I'm saying? Because as a man, me coming into a relationship and my finances is not in order, I'm not gonna be in the right headspace to make that relationship successful, especially if my woman is successful and I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Because it goes back to you know, just just tradition. The tradition is talking about is the Bible, but it's it's not gonna quote the Bible. Even if these days tradition don't really apply like it used to, in the back of our head, as a grown man, you feel like if all else break down, you should be able to pay for everything and make sure that your family is straight. You still are the leader of that household. So you would Woo! That's in the world, by the way. You are still the leader of the household. You understand? You are still the leader of the house. You are still the head of the house. But a slick nick, they don't think like that. You understand? You are going to take care of them because they are your Lord. And guess what? Whatever they tell you, you're going to do. Listen, the, a, a man cannot be telling you, you must go out and work. He will stay in the house. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Okay? Let's keep playing. To carry the load, you know what I'm saying? You must carry the load. Okay. And your wife may get pregnant. Your wife may lose her job. Your wife may do whatever. You being a husband, you being a man of the household, you need to be able to carry that whole load. I'm gonna say. Okay. Now, before we get that, give me, give me Second Thessalonians, 
trivial ten. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse ten. For even when we were with you, this commanded. This we uh, commanded. Give, give, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Give me one second. Okay, read that again. I just want to switch back to my phone. Read it. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. Read. For even when we, this we commanded. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. If any would not work, neither should he eat. That's very clear. That's plain. Next verse. Watch this. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disordered, working not at all, but are busy bodies. You see that part right there? It says, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. What is the disorder? Not working, not having a job, not wanting to get a job. Because there's one thing, there's a brother not having a job, but they are looking for one. That's a diff total, that's the brother that wants to do what? They want to apply the scriptures. We understand that. That's not something to feel anything about because it, it happens to, the, to all of us. You understand? You, you may lose a job, that happens. Okay, but we're talking about that brother who doesn't want to get one but he wants to live off a sister. No, that's disorderly. Read that again, verse 11. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. We hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. He says, working not at all. They don't want to work. They are busy bodies. Read. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You see what he's saying? He says, now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work. Meaning what? They must get a job and eat their own bread so they can be able to maintain themselves and be able to, uh, to ready themselves to maintain a wife and children. Come on. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He says, don't be weary in well-doing. Meaning, what is the well-doing? The subject matter is the what? Having a job. He says, don't be weary in well-doing. Well-doing meaning we're having a job and taking care of your, your nation, taking care of yourself. Read on. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man. And have we, no we, we might hold, wait, wait, hold on. It says, if any man obey not our word by this epistle, because the apostle Paul had to write this to the church in Thessalonica, because this was going on. He says, note that man, meaning what? Point him out, expose him, shame him. Come on, read. Note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. You see that thing? It says, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Because what? But a nig, a slick nig is not ashamed by this stuff. A slick nig, this is normal to him. That's a slick nig right there. You understand? Read on. Verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. You see what he's saying? But he says, but don't count him as an enemy. He's not an enemy. But guess what? He says, but you must admonish him. Correct, correct him as a brother. Meaning what? You must, you must what? He check him to tell him, bro, you need to get a job. We're not talking about that brother that is looking, dropping CVs, waking up in the morning. You understand? They are on the internet, scrolling, applying and all of... We're not talking about that brother. We're talking about that slothful Nick that wants to mush off the sister. Because the sister is simple, she's thirsty, she's just looking for the D, guess what? She will take that slick nick. Once, once you are now married to that slick nick, she's yours. I mean, he's yours. You, you, you cannot, there's no take backs after that. And we cannot make him to get a job because he's the head of that house, quote unquote. He's the head of that house. Now we can't tell him to do nothing. We can't force him to go and get a job. We can't. He's not our place to do it. He knows the scripts. He just won't apply because he's a slick nick. 
is slothful. You understand? Okay. Let me go back now and share my screen. That I have two sides to this. Of course, <laughs> I really do. Of if you course, know me personally, of course. then you know I have two sides to it. When you're in college, I mean, you're building. I mean, you're. Mm, let me see. Yeah, not this one. Nine fifty one. Financial stability. Yes. Men don't care about that because a lot of times men are always the breadwinner. Equal level mm -hmm. at the same time. Men don't care about that. If if a man meets a woman and she's struggling or she's going through something, if she has a good heart and we see the potential in her and she, and she can If she, she has a good heart or if she has a fat ass. No. If, if a she woman has a fat ass or some fat titties. Or she gives up quick. You guys love her. Okay. Strong languages. So just you know, be aware of that. Okay, 951. Let's go to 951. Able to assist you as a man, to able to assist in paying for. How am I going to be able to assist you as a man, to able to assist in paying for the apartment or whatever it is, maybe just me being a provider I am, I don't think I'm, I could do that. I tell my wife all the time, if it, if it ever falls apart for both of us, I'm going back to what got me here. You know what I'm saying? We're going back to selling them bricks and at least until I get back to where I need to be. Going back to fives and tens, you know baby. Purple tops. That ain't no lot though. So I'm, fat. I'm like, hey, I'm going to do what I know can put food on the table. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas, they, they not going to do that. They're going to live off these women. You see that, sister? Wait, wait, wait. Sister, can you hear it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Listen to the voices today, you know. See, the sisters today, they are so confident in the way they speak. I don't have to force them. Okay, let me go back. Tears, baby, purple tops. That ain't no lot of them. So fat. Hey, I'm going to do what I know can put food on the table. You know what I'm saying? A lot yeah. of niggas. He says he's going to do what, I, what he has to do. Obviously, we don't, we don't say go sell drugs. No, no, none of that garbage. Get an honest job. You understand? Whether it's uh, working at McDonald's, whatever, cash crusaders, you do it for your family. Because guess what? You, your mind is on the script. Okay. They they not gonna do that. They gonna they gonna leave all these women. That's a slick nick. You know what I'm saying? They gonna pretend like they they on Indeed and all that all day, mm -hmm. but actually they they playing the game. You you put your hand behind that fucking PS4 or the Xbox. That been screaming hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's that's are you listening to this? Yes, yes sir. you know those brothers that be liking to play video games or they are always on their phone on social media they don't want to do nothing they're supposed to look for jobs but they're not doing it you understand they pretend as if they are getting a job they are looking for one but they are not doing it. that's a slick me okay <laughs> it's a fact it's a fact <laughs> But as soon as he hear that garage go up, you know what I'm saying? He open that laptop up and indeed up like he been searching all day. <laughs> That's what these niggas be doing to y'all, man. I don't want to call that a double standard. Uh, this one is she's uh, not this one. Let's move on. This one is the stuff that the way she talks. Let's let's go to her. So strong language. Let's just you know keep it straight somebody be making a certain amount of money and like you're not there some men or finessers they just they use it they come after women who you see that thing that's a slick nigga right there you see what she's saying it says some men give me that in sriracha 11 hmm sriracha 11 with 29 that's what i want Sirac, no no not 11 uh-huh sriracha 11 29 watch this some men they've got game and you sisters, the the game they have in the, with the with the Bible is what we read in Second Timothy three, when it says having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Sirach eleven verse twenty nine. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter eleven verse twenty nine. Read. Bring not every man into thine house. Do what? Bring not every man into thine house. So the problem is some sisters, they just want to prove every brother. No, he's cute. No, he's tall. He's dark. He's handsome. He's got big feet. 
but you don't realize that you've got a slick nick. That nick is hiding down there in those fringes. You're not going to be able to see him. You understand? You're not going to be able to see the nick. You know, wait, wait, I'm sorry. That's really nice. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Bring not every man into thine house. Uh -huh. For the deceitful man hath many trains. You see that thing? For the deceitful man has many trains. They've got games. You understand? He's a slick nick. He knows how to work you. Because guess what? Your mind is captivated by him. Guess what? It says, for the, because the deceitful man has many trains. If this plan doesn't work, he's going to jump up to the next one. What is the goal? To body bag you, to put you in a body bag. Because guess what? They're going to require you to go out there to get the money, to work, to bring the bread home while they sit at home. And what? So no, I'm the alpha male. You know, lions don't go hunt. Females are the ones that go hunting. We, sit, we, we protect the herd. I'm protecting the compound. Some evil stuff, you're going to hear stuff like that. Okay? Jump down to verse 33. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Take heed of a mischievous man. The mischievous man is the deceitful man in verse 29 that has many traits. Come on. For he worketh wickedness. He does what? For he worketh wickedness. Lest he bring upon, upon thee a perpetual blot. You see that thing? is a You must take heed. How do you do that? You prove him. You understand? You must prove him long enough to search if the need is hiding. You understand? Take heed of a mischievous man, for he worketh wickedness, lest he bring upon thee a perpetual blot. You're going to have problems in the marriage forever. That are never going to end. Why? Because you have a slick need in the midst. You understand? looking at the woman who's not the pretender who really got what she says she got and, you know they get geeked up on um a lot of houston niggas are sex mm, mm, mm. I mean, this one yeah so strong language yeah. okay but there's conversation in the background who's talking in the background if you want to focus you know i you know they get geeked up on um a lot of houston niggas are sex chasers I mean, y'all are, you know, I've, I've never seen shit like this in my life. I like Any finesses. Other sitters, Let's stick with you know? the finesse word. Okay. We finesses. Sack chases and finesse. Y'all worse than a lot of these bitches, you know what I'm saying? You know, y'all see girls. Meaning what? He's a band. He's a broke ass nigga. Girl in the biz, you see she's staying in a fucking high rise that's, you know, sealed off. And you know she got to be paying about 25 to 3, 3,500 to live in that bitch, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and, and you see that and your eyes light up and you see dollar signs, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, for a woman that's already on that shit, you know, we accept a little bit more sometimes. You know, you either get the women who are going to be lonely, like I'm sister soldier, I don't need nobody. Or you get the woman who's like, you know, I do want love. I do want a chance. I am going to give him a chance or because, less. you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a try. I'm going to work with him because he's not in my, he's not in my class. <laughs> this is what happens. But a nick, a nick, a slick nick, these things don't affect him. A slick nick is not affected by these things. You understand? Financially stable. I'm not going to hold that against him. But what you end up getting is a big fucking mm, bill. You see that to... thing? It says you end up with a bill. Meaning what? This Negro, he's just a bill. And guess who's going to fit the bill? The sister is going to fit the bill. Because when the sister goes out, he's at the house. He's at the house. He's not going out there to do the work. He's not going out there to get the bread. You see that thing? So now he's become a parent. Go back to Sarah 25. When he's supposed to be what? He's supposed to be the head of the house to take care of things. You understand? Read that, Sarah 25, 22. Ecclesiastes 25, verse 22. Wait. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. You see that thing? This woman right here that she's talking right now, this woman is full of anger. This sister right here, she's full of anger and much reproach. You can see the way she's talking. She's bitter. Okay? financially stable i'm not gonna hold that against him but what you end up getting is a big fucking bill trying to help him put him on you know what i'm saying and i ain't motherfucking build a bear but, i done did that too many motherfucking times and she's done too many 
She's done it too many times. You understand? Baby, no. I've been hit for thousands, thousands, and I can never fucking do that again. Hey, shout, I out, don't to, shout out to you that broke. Shout that out broke. to the niggas. You got <laughs> less. You did. You did. But if there is a God, there is karma. Okay? You see that touch right there? So, sisters, I hope you listening to this because if you don't prove the brother, make sure that he's been holding a job for a while, you know, two years plus, and so on, you can, he's got himself together, you understand, he can handle the finances, you understand, and if he don't know how to handle the finances, will he be, will he be step up, let's say you know how to handle the finances, guess what, if your wife knows he, she's better than you when it comes to money, listen, let her handle the finances, there's nothing wrong with it. You understand? But a Nick is not going to allow that to go down because of what? Pride. But guess what? With your pride, you're going to end up being broke all the time. Okay? Yes, we're in captivity. We're subject to payment. Don't get it twisted. You understand? I do recommend women work when they're in a relationship because they just make life you easier. That thing? That's Proverbs 31 mindset. Women must work. You must have a job, sis. Okay? This era don't shit. come in a, uh, if you, you brother, hmm. nah, that's not tonight's topic. You got to have a two income household, you know what I'm saying, to live any kind of comfortable. But if all else fails, you as a grown man should be able to pay for everything. You see that thing right there? You as a grown man, how, what makes you to be a grown man? The scriptures do that thing. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in topic. I like this precept, Toby chapter one. Watch this. This is this was I like the, the book of Toby, the beautiful book. Um, give me Toby one and verse. Give me Toby chapter one and verse nine. Yeah, read verse nine. Then we're gonna read down a little bit. Toby so chapter one verse nine. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, when I was come to the age of a man. I married Anna of mine own kindred, and of her I began to bias. Really? And when we were carried away captives to Nineveh, all my brethren and those that were of my kindred did eat of the bread of the Gentiles. So now, what you want to notice is that this is during the Assyrian Empire, okay? Um, Sennacherib was... Um, Sennacherib, Sennacherib was the was the king at that time. You understand? You had Enamasa, which is Shalmaneser the fifth, and then after Shalmaneser, it was Sennacherib. But what you want to see here is, hmm, I don't think I want to go there. Jump back up, hmm, drop that. I don't want to go there. Let's jump up to verse. Yes, jump down to verse sixteen. So, which of the one, the 16. Come on. And in the time of Emanessa, I Enemesa. gave me. Enemesa. Enemesa is Shalmaneser. That's Greek. Shalmaneser. Enemesa. That's Shalmaneser. Come on. And in the time of Enemesa, I gave many alms to my brethren hmm. and gave my bread to the hungry. Read. And my clothes to the naked. And if I saw any of of my nation dead or cast about the walls of Nineveh, I buried him. Because what Sennacherib was killing, was he was, what was Sennacherib doing? Sennacherib was killing our, father, our forefathers and foremothers, and Tobit was the one that was burying the dead bodies. Watch this. But what you want to see is that Tobit was very responsible. Tobit, guess what? In verse 9, Tobit, uh, when he came to the age of a man, that means he had a job. Tobit had a job. He took care of things. You understand? He saved up. He says, and remember, this was he was in captivity. He was not in the kingdom. Tobit was able to what? He got married because he was. He applied what we read in Genesis 2.24. You understand? Shall a, live, leave, shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Tobit did that because Tobit had a job. He had money saved up to take care of what? The wife and the child, the child for buyers. Not, not only that, Read verse 16 again. This is what Tobit did. Tobit, chapter 1, verse 16. And in the time of Emanessa, I gave many alms to my brethren and gave my bread to the hungry. You see what Tobit did? 
He says, I give many arms. He didn't give arms. He says, give many arms to my brethren and give my bread to the hungry. You understand? He was taking care of Israel. Read. Right? And my clothes to the naked. And my clothes to the naked. Come on. And if I saw any of my nation dead or cast about the walls of Nineveh, I buried them. Today, guess what we are doing? We are raising the dead. We are raising the dead. And guess what? We must give them bread. We must clothe them that are naked. We must teach them the laws of God to take them out of the shame and the reproach of sin. And also, physically also, clothing. Brothers, sisters, don't have clothes. We must come together and help. Okay? And give arms. Now, let's play on. And I feel like if you're not in a position to do that, you don't need to be there. That's heavy right there. That's some heavy right there. I know it went over some nicks. If you are a nick, it will go over your head. Let's rewind the tape. And I feel like if you're not in a position to do that, you don't need to be there. You need to be focusing. You see that thing right there? If you're not in a position to take care of yourself, your wife, your children that are not even there, guess what? You don't need to be proving nobody. Don't want to prove anyone. Mm -mm, just stand right there and deal with yourself and apply the scriptures so you can change your life. That's what you need to be doing. You don't need to be doing nothing. He says you need to be focusing. You see that thing? You need to be focusing. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Mm. Ecclesiastes chapter... Um, uh -huh, Sirach chapter 38. Ecclesiastes chapter 38, verse 24. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 38, verse 24. Read. Really? The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. Mm -hmm. And he that hath little business shall become wise. You see that thing? is that the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. Meaning what? A, a sober-minded brother, guess what they will do? They will, they, will take, they will use every opportunity they got to do what? To build themselves up. If they've got issues, they want to solve. If they need to improve themselves in terms of what? Their career, aspirations, and all of that. They guess what they will do? They will, they will improve themselves. That's why it says, the wisdom of a land man cometh by opportunity of leisure. And he that, little, he that have little business shall become wise. Because you're using your time wisely. You understand? That's why I always tell you, brothers, have a timetable. Many of you don't even have one. If you have one, you don't follow it. Read on. Verse 26, verse 25. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow and that glorieth in the gold, that driveth oxen and is occupied in their labors, and whose talk is of bullocks? Meaning what? He says, your, your, your focus cannot only just be work. Because don't get it twisted. What I'm bringing out is that you need to have a balanced life. What I'm bringing out, you must balance things out. Because, but here, here in the 25, is talking about if you're only, your, your focus is only like, I, I need to get that paper. Listen, you must not live up for the meat that perishes. But is he saying that you must not uh, take care of your family? No, no, he's not saying that. He says that must not be the primary focus, meaning what? You focus on that, you end up what? You end up neglecting the work of the Most High. That's not what he's saying. Read on. Verse 26. Read. He giveth his mind to make furrows, mm -hmm. and he's diligent to give the kind fodder. You see, he says he's diligent to give the kind order. Meaning what? You're focusing on what? Work, 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 work. But the work of the Most High God is neglected. No, he's saying don't do that. Read on. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and that and they that cut and grave seals, and are diligent to make great variety, and give themselves to counterfeit imagery, and watch to finish a work. So now this is going into men that are what? Men that are working. He's talking about men that work, a carpenter and a workmaster. If they, they labor day and night, and they that cut and grave seals, meaning what? You know when they be creating these shapes with, with, their, um, with, with carpentry, where they be chairs, and they be engraving things, some pattern in a chair or a table, 
whatever, whatever he is feeling, mm -hmm. those type of things. He says they watch to finish the work, meaning what? Their mindset is about what? Let me get the work done. That's the mindset, okay? He says you must have that mindset, whether you're doing the work of the Mosai, whether you're doing the work, the work, the work in order for you to survive, to maintain yourself, your wife and your family. Read. The smith also sitting by the anvil. The smith. Considering... So the smith is those men that that eat, that that work with iron. You understand? Come on. And considering the iron work, the vapor of the fire wasted his flesh. Read. And he fighted with the heat of the furnace. Come on. The tools of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he make. He sitteth, he sitteth his mind to finish his work and watches to polish. You see what he's saying? Yeah, that's why the brother said, let's go back to the day because I know some of you forgot already. Not in a position to do that, you don't need to be there. You need to be focusing. You need to like, be what? If you're not in a position to do that, you don't need to be there. You need to be focusing. You don't need to be proving nobody. You need to be focusing. That's why he says he sets his mind to finish his work and watches to polish it perfectly. You need to be focusing. You understand? If you're working with what? You're working with iron. Okay? You are a smith. You're working with iron. That's what you need to focus on. Because that's you know. When you perfect that, you're going to be able to, uh, to take care of your family. Okay? Come on. Verse 9. So doth the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet. Hold on. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. You are, you are eating like a, like a noodle. Put some power in this thing. Come on. Verse 29. Ecclesiastes 38 verse 29. That's it right there. Come on. So doth the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always carefully set at his work and maketh all his work by number. You see that thing? That's the porter now. That's what they are. They work in port. They, are, they make pottery. They work with clay and all of that. Mm -hmm. They are focusing on what they are, the, what the product that they are making, the pattern that is going to pop up. Read. He fashioned the clay with his arm and bowed down his strength before his feet. He Read. applies himself to lead it over. And he is diligent to make clean, to make clean the furnace. He says he is diligent to make clean the furnace, meaning what? He's diligent in his business. You understand? Come on. All these trust to their hands, and everyone is wise in his work. You see, he says all these trust to their hands, and everyone is wise in his work. Meaning what? You must have a skill. You understand? You must have, that's why sisters get a skill. If you don't know how, if you don't have like these, uh, you don't have a degree, you don't have a diploma, so on and so forth. Get a skill. There's many skills you can get. You understand? Brothers too. That's because you don't have a degree. That doesn't mean nothing. You can get a skill. And be skillful in something that you know is going to be able, you're going to be able to maintain yourself. Open a business, so on and so forth. Those things of that nature, as long as you can be able to take care of yourself. That's what this is going on. This what, that's what this is going into. Take care of yourself, your nation, your family, your children. It says, without thee, read the next verse now. Verse 32, watch this. Verse 32. Uh -huh. Without these cannot a city be inhabited. Read. Right? And they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. You see what it's saying? It says, without these cannot a city be inhabited. How are we going to be able to build this great city of, Je the great city of Jerusalem if men and women don't put their hand to the plow? How is that going to happen? If we have need among us, how are we going to build? We're not going to be able to build. So, sisters, you need to be able to, man, that man must be able, he, have a, must, he must have a revolutionary mind. He must be revolutionary minded. He must be about the nation. He must be about what? He must be about being busy in the work of the Most High God and understanding that if he does these things, guess what's going to happen? He will get the kingdom. So you need to have a you need you need to have a man that has a mindset like that. You cannot a, a Nick, a slick Nick. Mm, you can't deal with that. He's he's he's, he's about he's about um he's about his role. That's all he cares about. That's all he cares about. I'm gonna deal with that man. Watch this. 
you need to set, you need to break up with your girl that you with right now, and you need to get your ass on. It's Google? not me, baby. No, it's not you. It's me. It's me, baby. I'm not in position. <laughs> Uh, that's right. I need to be. Your ass need to be, because all that time you spend it with her need to be being spent on Indeed. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? Because the slick nicks, those are those lavi dabi brothers. Lavi dabi, romantic, and all of that. Listen, me, my ro my version of romantic, I put a roof over your head, I buy clothes, I buy food, make sure medical is covered, with the savings in the house and all of that. That's my version of romantic. Uh, let me say that again. Food, clothing, raiment, medical, education, you understand? Guiding the house, teaching the house, you know? That's my version of romantic. But a slick meat, that's not the focus. The focus of a slick meat is roses, is chocolate, is watching TV, playing video games, you understand? Chatting on WhatsApp, Googling, watching TikTok. That's the mindset of a slick meat. A slick nick thinks like that. What is a slick? A slick nick is uh, is is he is also he's got traits of a simp. A slick nick is a simp, but the way he plays it, you won't pick up that that's a simp. But he's he's very slick. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um. Maybe I need to go to the next video. Because the question would be. Why would a sister go out? Why would a sister go, if no, she knows that the brother can keep a job, he's always getting fired, whatever the case may be. Why would a sister go out with a sick nick? Let's see. Hmm. We're gonna find out. Let's play this video. Was in. I ask myself this question all the time. Everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today, okay, we don't condone all of this. You know, she's fake. We get that she's got long hair. That's not don't belong to it. She's got blonde hair. You and she's all into her looks. But just listen to what she said. Today's video. Let me tell you how it was inspired. So on my first video that I ever uploaded to YouTube, symptoms of a broke man. I still symptoms of a broke man. Get comments to this day, but it was one particular comment where this guy asked me. If you're such a boss, why do you continuously attract broke men? And hmm. Why do you continuously attract a slick nick? That's the question. I said, wow, that's a good one. Trust me, I didn't ask myself this question all the time. Why do broke men like me, first of all? And then two, why do I date them? I'm going to tell you today why women like broke men. Hmm. That's a million dollar question, isn't it? Sister, are you paying attention? Yes, sir. Oh, please. Okay, I'm going to tell you today why women like broke men, mm. okay? So before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to my please, and let's get into it. So I think the number one reason for most women and why they date broke men is because of the penis. Oh, that's it right there. You see that thing right there? That's the reason why these women, they go out with a slick nick because of the D. The D is good. D is good. Can I get an amen? The hell is that? <laughs> Can I get an amen on that thing? Sister, amen. don't be quiet. <laughs> don't be quiet. We keep it, we keep it in a hundred. Sister. Hello? Yes, sir. No, no, no. You're not a sister. Sister, you get that? The reason why you go out with slick names is because the D is good. That's why you do that. Let's rewind it. Up and follow me on Instagram at Kesalise and let's get into it. So I think the number one reason for most women and why they date broke men is because of the penis. The sex was in Pekka. Bub. Okay, I don't know if it's the fact that they know they need to borrow some money or borrow your car or they need a place to stay that really amps up the sex game, but whatever it is, it was lit. Okay, I'm glad I moved on from that because you see that thing right there? Because it doesn't last. As soon as the after you your 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 toes are curled up, you understand? You understand? You curl your toes and all of that because the D is good. 
After that, guess what happened? After that, you realize you've got a slick nick. But guess what? You're not going to leave the slick nick because the D is good. Before you know it, your whole life is a mess. You are older now. Don't nobody want you. The slick nick, when it's done with you, is going to drop you like a hot potato. Is that in the Bible? Yes. Let's go to the scripture. Hmm. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 13. That's in the Bible, by the way. Give me that in Sarah 11, 29. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 29. You see, sisters, you need to understand when you're dealing with a slick snake, if you are thirsty, if you are a thirsty bucket, guess what? That man is going to make you his cup bucket. It's that simple. Because he's realizing that sister's thirsty, you know, she, she, she has not had it. She has not had B in a long time because she's in the truth. She's getting herself right. Guess what? You end up with a what? You end up with a slick neck. Read that. Sirach 11, 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trains. The deceitful man has many trains. Meaning what? He knows how to deal with a simple stuff. He knows how to play you. That's why it says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power they have. They don't apply what is written. Now, is the sister correct in what she's saying? The number one reason why women hook up with slick nicks is because of the deed, mm -hmm. because of the sex. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch this. Second Samuel, chapter 13, verse 1. Let's start there. Second Samuel, chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. No, Amnon. Amnon was David, well, was, um, was Absalom's brother. He was his half brother. You understand? So you had David's son, Absalom. You understand? And David, Absalom had a, had a sister. It says the sister was fair. She was beautiful. It says what? And the son of David had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. You see that thing right there? Because they did their different mothers. So now Amnon wants to sleep with his half-sister. That's what Amnon wants to do. Okay, that's an abomination of your sleep. Read Lucas 18. Go ahead. Verse 2. Take him book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 2. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. Mm -hmm. So she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it was hard for him to do anything to her. So now Amnon, she was Amnon was vexed because her beauty kept him prisoner. Give me that in Judith chapter 6, verse 9. Judith 16, verse 9. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. This was Amnon's problem. Okay, Amnon had a problem because it says she, he was so vexed uh, that he felt sick for his sister Tamar. That's how much the lust he had for his sister. Give me Judith 16 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Judith chapter 16 verse 9. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Mm. Her beauty oh. took his mind prisoner. You see that thing? Her beauty took his mind Prisoner, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read that thing again, verse 9. I don't know why the most like God will do this thing. You see, read it again. The book of Judith, chapter 16, verse 9. Uh -huh. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Read. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Go ahead. And the fortune passed through his neck. Hmm. Hold on. That's not a regular need to read. Read that part again. The book of Judith, chapter 16, verse 9. Her mm -hmm. sandals ravished his eyes. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. And the fortune passed through his neck. A fortune is a sword. Is a, and, the, and the sword passed through his neck. Meaning what? Our foremother, Judith, he was going to chop off, he was going to put this man to death. But the point here is this. He says, her portion passed through his neck. That's the sword right there. 
You understand? But because the beauty, her beauty kept his mind prisoner, guess what? He was not on a land. Okay, let's go back. Second Samuel chapter 13. Read verse 2 again. Second book of Samuel chapter 13, verse 2. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it was hard for him to do anything to her. He says, Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Meaning what? Obviously, that's your baby, that's your half sister. What's wrong with you? You want to sleep with your own sister. So his, his mind is in prison because of her beauty and because of his lust. Now he's realizing there's nothing I can do to sleep with my sister. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 3. But, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. Jonadab. Uh -huh. Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's Shimea. brother. Mm -hmm. The son of Shimea, David's brother. Come and on. Jonadab was a very subtle man. He was a slick nick. Jonadab was a slick nick. He always had plans on how to do what. You ever had, a, you know, you're, you're among friends in the world, so-called. You understand? There's always this brother that always got game. You want that sister? This is what you must do. You know, you must do like this, like this, like this. is what you must say. You understand? This is how you're going to body bag this woman. So Jonadab was a slick nick. Okay? He had game. He had many traits. Right? And, and he said unto him, Why art thou, being king's son, lean, lean from day to day? So now Jonadab is asking, is asking Amnon. He says, why are, you, why are you losing weight like this? You understand? Remember, Amnon's mind is being kept prisoner by his sister's beauty. You understand? By his sister's beauty. Read on. Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon, and Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. You see, he does not even have shame. You understand? Because he was a homer. So he says, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. Now he's telling his friend, the slick nick. Okay, come on. And Jonathan said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. You see that part right there? He says, listen, pretend to be sick. Lay yourself down in your bed in your house and pretend to be sick. Go ahead. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. You see what now? Now David is coming to see uh, Amnon. As he coming to see Amnon, he's realizing, okay, he's sick. So Amnon is saying, listen, I need you to call my sister Tamar to come and take care of me while I'm sick. And you must, must bring me, you understand, and feed me. Come to my bedroom and feed me because I'm not well. Remember, Jonadab is the one that gave the, what, the instruction, that slick nick. Go ahead. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, and my sister come and make no, no. me what version are you reading? Let Tamar, my sister, come. Come on. Second book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 6. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come mm -hmm. and, make me, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. You see what he's saying? Now he's telling King David now the plan that Jonadab gave unto him. Read on. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, Amnon's house, and dress him meat. Many man make food for him, which was his sake. Come on. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. So now she's making food for this. Slick Nick, because Amnon was a slick Negro also. Go ahead. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. 
and Amnon said, have out, have out all men from me, have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. You see what he's saying? He didn't want to eat when, the, when, the, when his sister wanted to give him food. He said, no, everybody out. I just want me and my sister. Me and my sister, well, I want to be alone with my sister. Everybody out. You see that thing? That's a slick name. Isolation. Go ahead. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber. Meaning the what? When he says bring meat into the chamber, meaning bring it into the bedroom. Go ahead. That I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. Read. Really? And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, come lie with me, my sister. You see what she's saying? Have sex with me. That's what now Amnon is saying. Have sex with me. Now that the sister is in the house, guess what? Hmm. Watch this. Go back to 2 Timothy 3 now. I want you, brothers, I need you sisters to pay attention here. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3 verse 6. Read that thing for me again. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. Read. For of the sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. You see that thing? They lead captive, they creep into houses. You see how? Because his version of creeping into the house, what did he do? He pretended to be sick to lure the sister into the house and kick and say, everybody out, I want my alone time with my sister. Because the sister is not thinking anything of it. Because, by the way, David also didn't think anything of it because that's your sister. Okay, and you are sick. All right, go back. Second Samuel, chapter 13, verse 11. Second Book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 11. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. Read. Really? And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me. Meaning, do don't rape me. me. Meaning, don't rape me. He says, do not force me. Meaning, don't rape me. Come on. Do not force me. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not doubt this folly. So now the sister is saying, no, 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 no. We can't do this. You understand? This thing is not supposed to be done. I'm your sister, damn it. Okay, come on. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? You see that thing meaning what? Remember, she's a virgin. It says, I'm going to cause my shame to go. Because guess what? It's a shame for a sister not to be a virgin and she's not married. That's a shame. Go ahead. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. You, because, you know, just stick to daddy. Talk to daddy, okay? Daddy's not going to withhold me from you. Because he knows very well that David was not going to give to that. She knew. So she used what she was. She was smart. He said, no, talk to my, talk to daddy. Daddy will approve it. Okay, come on. How be it he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. So now Amnon raped his sister. Amnon raped his sister because that's how deep the lust was. The lust was so deep, Amnon raped his sister. Now, watch this. This is the part. Let me go back to the video so we don't lose the thought. Because I know some of you forgot. Men and why to least, and let's get into it. So I think the number one reason for most women and why they date broke men is because of the penis. <laughs> The sex was impeccable, okay? I don't know if it's the fact that they know they need to borrow some money or borrow your car. You see that thing? Because the reason why they sex you good, they sex you good, but they have an agenda. The agenda is, I want the roof over my head, I want the car, I want to buy something for myself, I'm going to use your credit score because mine is poor, so on and so forth. There's always an agenda with a slick neck, okay? or they need a place to stay that really amps up the sex game but whatever you see that thing they know they because in order for the for for the 
for the brother to make sure that they don't mind if they have to drink some stuff. You understand? Go to Jamaica, be drinking some root. You understand? Be drinking some green drink. They don't mind doing that because they know a lot of the sisters, they are thirsty. The slick Nick knows that. And slick Nick, he knows that a lot of these sisters, they are what? They are thirsty. That's why a lot of them buy bread, buy, buy, buy breakers and all that. You know, you know, they buy cucumbers and bananas, so on and so forth. Because they know these sisters are thirsty. Okay? So a slick Nick, he knows, hmm, how do I play this? I need to make sure that when it comes to the bedroom, I do things that no man is going to do. Now, this woman is going to be focusing on the sex, but I know I'm one, I want the house, I want the car, I want the money. I want to be taken, taken care of every month. And usually a sneak nick has multiple women that is doing that way. It is. It was late. Okay. I'm glad I moved on from that. Okay. Now read verse 15. Watch this. Read 14 and 15 together. Second book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 14. Right. How be it, he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced uh -huh. her and lay with her. Next verse. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. Stop right there. Then Amnon, remember now, Amnon, he bust the nut. You understand? Am they in, in, the, in the world, they call it a devil nut. Hmm. I know there's some new brothers in here. They, they're still young. They don't get what I'm saying. They call it a devil nut in the world. Meaning, you are so you are you are so thirsty, right? And because at right, that point the devil is on you. After you bust the nut, guess what happens? The devil leaves you and say, "Pow, you're on your own, nigga. I'm out." Now you're sitting there like, "What the hell did I do?" Because guess what? The devil now has left you. You understand? Because at that point, you were so hot, you couldn't control yourself. And the sisters too, that's where, the, this is, these are the recipes for what? Backdoor marriages. The slick nick, the creeping unawares into the congregation, he, he sits there for a while, he starts to identify those sisters that have what? One major problem, major indicators, low self-esteem, you understand? They don't study. They always, you know, their head down and all of that. Mm, that's the one I want right there. That one right there. I want that one. They know how to identify their prey because this is a predator. Okay? Read that again, verse 15. Second book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 15. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. After, now, after, after he had sex with his sister, now he hates. His sister now. Now he hates her now. You understand? You know? So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. You see that thing? Now the hatred, now he has got more hatred for her sister than she than he had the love that he had for her before he slept with his with his sister. You understand? Watch this. Come on. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. Meaning what? Get the hell out. You see that? They sex you. After that, they get what they want. They drop you like a hot potato. That's what we're reading here. And Amnon said unto her, Arise and be gone. Hit the road, be. That's what he said. Get the hell out. That's what even with all the money you've got, guess what? Now you've got, you've got a new car in your name and you've got He's got a car under his name with your credit, okay? You are taking care of him now. You got him used to a specific lifestyle. And then when you say he must go, he takes you to court. He says, she got me used to a specific lifestyle. Now I'm going to sue you. going to pay me money every month to, to maintain myself. Yes, men do that. It's not just the women that do that. Men do that too, to these women that have money. Yeah. There's a movie by Tyler Perry that was... What's the name of that movie? Um, there was this brother. He was working with his mother. Their job was to what? This brother, he would go out and, and, and target these women that had inheritances, these older women. It's a black movie, you understand, by Tyler Perry. So this man, he would go out with these women. He knows they are desperate. They need a deed. They are horny and all of that. 
but they've got things, they've got possessions, they, 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 they have nice jobs and all of that. He was going after them and cleaning and cleaning these women out. That's a slick name. So you sisters, because you are you you are horny, you are thirsty. Guess what? A slick nick will slip inside of you, if you know what I mean. And because you are thirsty, that is the one thing that's gonna keep you there. But that's not gonna last. Mm, it might go on for maybe three months, yeah, three six months, and you think, oh, no, that's good. No, 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 no. As soon as he busts the nut, guess what? Now you're gonna see the true nick pop out. You see, men, men, they don't take time for you to, as, as, as once the man, the, 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 the brother, you know, he drops his stuff in you, now the true Negro comes out. Sisters can pretend for a while, they can push it for a while, but brothers, as soon as he does his thing, now you're going to see his real character will come out. Mm -hmm. His true nature, the one that you didn't take time to prove, you're going to end up with a slick neck. Okay, watch this. Um, let's see because they will get you in your feelings sometimes. When you see that part right there, they will get you in your feelings. Mm. The sex is good, you think that you want more from them, but then you, you see that they thing? will get you in your feelings sometimes. When the sex is good, you think that you this sister's got experience. She's telling you sometimes when the sex is good, you see the common denominator sex, 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 sex want more from them but then you realize wow you're really a roach I mm, you are really a nick you are a slick nick i can't make you my man you know what i mean so that's really kind of what happens but it takes a minute especially if it's like i say if it's um it's kind of hard to detect you see that thing there it is right there you should just say is that if the sex is good it's very difficult to detach and because sisters are thirsty Guess what they do? They hold on to that slick nick. And the slick nick, he's the one that is going to give you diseases. He's the one that is going to cause a lot of stress in your life. And you're not going to see it at the beginning because guess what? You are still addicted to the D, to the magic stick. You understand? But over time, you're really going to start to see. And by the time you realize it's too late, you've got three, four kids. After you've got three, four kids, he drops you like a hot potato. He moves on somewhere else. Guess who's left with the kids? You. You are now left. You are now you are left with the kids now by yourself. At that point, you want to settle down and all of that. The slick nick is gone. He's on to the next victim. In the truth with the Bible, by the way. Don't get it twisted. Especially if it's like I say, if it's um, it's kind of hard to detach. I'm guessing because they don't have any other skill that they make sex their skills because the bill. There it is right there. You see that thing? A slick nick. They go to the gym. They eat right. Where they get the money from? From these women that they are sexing. And these women, they reward them. So what is this? What is this? this a slick nick, what is he? He's a, he's a whore. A slick nick is a whore monster. Sex, sex is the trade he is. the business he's in. He's a gigolo get paid and they're not gonna pay them because they don't have no job so they gotta secure the woman to do it uh. and the way they secure us is they secure, they secure you sister they're gonna secure you with the sex they're gonna secure you with the sex you understand because you're simple as hell guess what they're gonna body bag you with the sex Oh, that's what it is. I'm sorry about my neighbor's dog barking, but he's just so stupid. But anyway, next thing is availability. They always have time. Mm, that's it right there. Because he's not he's not working. He doesn't have a job. Whenever you call him, you always get it. He's always available. Why? Because he's not working. He doesn't have a job. They're not out here grinding and hustling. So they have time. You can call them anytime you want to see them, and they are there as long as you pick them up most of the time. You see that thing? As long as you pick them up. Why? Because you are taking care of them. Give me that thing to go back to Sarah 25, 22. Because if you're always picking them up, guess what? That means when one, they cannot catch a cab because where they're going to get the money from? They don't have a job. 
You understand? Read that. Psalm twenty-five, twenty-two. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twenty-five, verse twenty-two. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. You see that thing? A woman that has to maintain her husband is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Jude, verse four. Jude, Jude, verse four. Watch this. Because the apostle Jude, he talked about this thing. He talked about the slick neck. Okay. Jude, verse four. Read what you got. The book of Jude, verse four. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Mm -hmm. who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Really? Ungodly men. What type of men? Ungodly men. Ungodly men. These men, they have a form of godliness, but they are denying the power thereof. These are ungodly men, but they say themselves just men. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Uh, is it Acts or Luke? One second. Yeah. Luke 20, Luke 20, verse 20. The book of Luke, chapter 20, verse 20. Read. They watched him. They did what? And they watched him. Guess what? A slick nick, they are going to watch you. Because guess what? They are studying you. Because they see not the simp sister right there. You understand? And new brothers and sisters, new brothers, new slick nick coming into the congregation, they are thirsty. You understand? They want to make somebody their come bucket and take them out the truth. They when they come in, they be hunting, they be just checking sisters out. Mm, always on that side of the room to see mm, which one here seems like he, she's the vulnerable one. I want that one right there. That's why I said they watched him. They will watch you. Okay, come on. And sent for the spies, which should feign themselves just men. You see that thing? Which should feign themselves just men. And send for spies which should feign themselves just men. Meaning what? This is not a, this, he's not a man of God. He's an ungodly man. That's what Jews said. They treat him unawares. You understand? They were ordained to the condemnation of death when the Lord returns. Ungodly men. But they feign themselves just men. You understand? They have the form of godliness. That's how they train themselves just men. They have a form of God. They have a ribbon of, they've got fringes and a ribbon of blue. They've got a Bible. You understand? They make notes and so on. Okay, come on. That they might take hold of his words. You see that thing? They listen to you. Read on. That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. In this instance, you're going to be delivered into their own hands because they want you. And they're going to get you because they know your sister is simple as hell. You understand? Go back to where he was at. Jude verse 4. The book of Jude verse 4. For there are certain men, crept in and ways, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Mm -hmm. And God men. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. You see that thing? Is that they are turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Meaning they're going to turn the grace that the Lord has given unto us before he returns for us to get ourselves together. They're going to turn that into sexual deviancy. They wanna, they're only coming in because they are thirsty. They're looking for that first bucket. You understand? They, the only reason why they come is because of what? Excuse the pun. The reason why they... they Come to the to the school is because what they want to turn the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, and be they, you can be sure they're gonna find that simple sister who doesn't want, who doesn't study, who's not applying the commandments. You understand? Who's not watchful? They're gonna look for that one. You understand? Who separates herself? Read on. And denying the only Lord God. And our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that thing? So because, guess what? These men, they are not the men of the Lord. They are not here to serve the Lord. They are only here because of what? They are only here because they want to do what? They are slick snakes. They want to sex the women and what? And move on. 
They sex the women, they get the benefits. What is the benefits? The car, the money, the what? The shelter, the clothes, and all of that. They just be going around and smooching off these women. But they're going to come in because, again, you remember, the slick nick, they also see that, wait a minute, brothers are getting themselves together and the sisters too, which means we can go and say, I also want to be, I'm an Israelite, I want to keep the commandments. But they're not there to keep the commandments or to build the nation. No, no. They are there because what? They are kept in unaware. They want to turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Watch this. Mm. Hey, slick me. Here's another one. Here's another one. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 13. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 13. This one is a slick nick. Remember, the class is called uh, uh, Spiritual Vampires Chronicles of Slick Nicks. Chronicles of Slick Nicks. So now, here's another characteristic right here of the Slick Nick. A Slick Nick, many, the, the, the characteristics of Slick Nicks, a lot of them, they, are, they, are, they, they, have, they have the spirit of abuse. They are very abusive, physically, mentally, spiritually. Uh, financial abuse, they are, they are abusive. We're going to deal with the verbal one. Deuteronomy 22, verse 13. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy 22, verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her. You see that thing? Isn't that what um, Amnon did? That's what Amnon did. That was not the wife. But the point is, he went in unto her. He, he forced himself on his sister. And guess what? After that, he hated his sister. Okay, come on. And give occasions of speech against her. And give occasion of speech against her. Verbal abuse. They are verbally abusive. You understand? They call you, they call you out, they, they call you names, they belittle you, and so on and so forth. You understand? Read. And bring up an evil name upon her. They bring up an evil name upon you, meaning what? They they belittle you. They cast you out. They use they use opprobrious words. You understand? They'll be you, they'll be casting you out with your private parts and all of those things. Yes. Read on. And say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not made. Meaning what? She's a hope. Now you see what he's doing? Now, the slick nick is, is quite abusive. The sex is good, but he's abusive. Verbally will abuse you. He will break your spirit. That's a slick nick. That's a spiritual vampire. They will break your spirit because in their mind, you are their position. They can do whatever they want with you outside of the scriptures. Because they hate themselves, they didn't take time to do what? To apply the scriptures to get themselves right. Guess what? They hate themselves. When they get together with you, they're going to hate you because they hate themselves. They're going to verbally abuse you. But you're not going to leave because guess what? The sex is good. The D is good. It's simple as hell. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 14. And give occasions of speech against her. And bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman. And when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Give me Sarah 23, verse 10. Give you chapter 23, verse 10. And a lot of the times, the a slick nick, you understand? They are very forward with the mouth. You understand? Very, very forward with the mouth. They be calling you names and things like that, belittling you. You understand? All of that. Why? They are the, 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 whole, the whole point is because a lot of the times, the, the, the train, the thought process of a slick nick, He's got step to it. First, he'll get you with the sex because the sister you are safe. Then they get you, the sex is good. Then the next thing, they must, they're going to break your spirit. Now you are fully dependent on them. You have, you, have, you have everything, but yet you are fully dependent on them in what sense? The sex is good. They, they trap you up with a good sex. But at the same time, they do what? They verbally abuse you. So now, when they verbally abuse you, I'm not going to do it again. How do you solve the problem? They sex. Now, it's always this bitter sweet all the time. Bitter sweet, bitter sweet. You have the sex, 
then verbal abuse. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. Then they go back. They say, guess what? You see that thing? Now you are checked up with that slick needle. Okay, come on. Sarah 23 verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes 23 verse 10. For as a servant that is continually beaten shall not be without any blue mark. No, no, without a blue mark. So a servant that is continually beaten. This not only going into physical abuse, but verbal abuse. They what? They continually beat you with their words. They are breaking your spirit. You understand? You come in, in the truth, the sisters got what? The sisters full of joy and all of that. And guess what? Now he gets married to this little Negro. Now the sister's gone. The sister don't even smile no more. Why? Because you hooked up with a slick Negro who's got demons on him. Now he's verbally abusing you. You understand? Come on. So he that sweareth and nameth God continually shall not be faultless. Because guess what? They say you're my position now. I can do whatever I want with you. That's the thought process. Okay, jump down to verse 15. No, verse 13. Read verse 13. Use not thy mouth to intemp intemperate swearing. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, verse 13. Use not thy mouth to intemperate swearing. For they in it, for they for therein is a word of sin. You see the thing, intemperate swearing, meaning what uncontrollable swearing. He says they in. He says they in is the word of sin. Jump down to verse 15 now. Watch this. The man that is accustomed to opprobrious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. You see that thing? Because this man is verbally abusing. You understand? He's verbally abusing the sister to do what? What is the objective? To break the sister's spirit. To quench the spirit. To break you. To destroy you. You understand? Watch this. Sarah 28 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes 28, verse 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see that thing? But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. The bones here is talking about what? Give me that in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 22. A mercy heart doth good like a medicine. A merry, not a mercy heart. Did you have your glasses on? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That's when you have somebody that is going to cherish you, somebody that is going to nourish you. You guess what? You're going to have a merry heart because they cherish you, they, what? they teach you, they guide you. But it does, when they correct you also, you take the correction. Because some sisters will confuse correction with abuse. No, I'm not talking about it. We're talking about verbally abusing. You understand? Not correction. It says, but a what? A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. You see that thing? But a broken spirit dries the bones. Meaning what? It destroys your mind. Your spirit is broken. Your mind is broken. Why? Because of what? Appropriate ways that are used continually. To bring you down to belittle you. Go back to Sarah 27, verse 17. I mean 28, 28, verse 17. Sarah 28. The book of Ecclesiastes, 28, verse 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see, you see that thing? It will break your spirit, it destroys your mind because your mind is a spirit. The whole point of this verbal abuser, this slick nick, is to break your spirit. They have your lock on the sex now because they don't have, um, they don't have other things. They only their tool is sex. They develop other traits. Not to get a job, no, because you think they'll do that. No, no, they will what? They they will they will break you down. They will break you. Why? So that you 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 have a low self esteem. They will break you down. They will destroy you spiritually and mentally. The whole point is to break your spirit that you don't have confidence. You don't think you can do better. That's the whole point of a slick nick. The sex is good, but you have all the benefits. They've got none of them. They don't contribute to nothing. 
He's a what? He's a slothful. He's a filthy soul. He doesn't want to go out and labor. He's mooching off of you. But the way he's going to do it, he will do it in such a way that will break your spirit. You understand? Watch this. Keep reading. Verse 18. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. But not so many as have fallen by the tongue. You see that thing? Because the tongue is dangerous. The tongue breaks the bone. The bones is talk about your mind. That's the mind. Okay, come on. Well, is he that is defended from it and had not passed through the venom thereof. The venom of the tongue, okay? Is as well as he that is defended from what? From the tongue, the, the, the forward mouth, right? Who had not drawn the yoke thereof, no, had been bound in their bonds. Meaning what? The, the tongue has not been what is not checked. That house is not in order. His mind is not right. He's sick. He's crazy. You understand? Cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Some brothers, they've got bipolar. They've got mood swings. One minute they are smiling. The next minute they are mad as hell. You understand? They've got mood swings. And a, a lot of the time, these mood swings is because of all these women they deal with. They deal with multiple women. The brothers only have got what? They've got multiple mood. They've got multi they, multiple personalities. They're crazy. They be moody. Why? Because of what? They keep taking all these spirits of these women that they deal with. Now they are with you. Because they didn't get themselves right. You were moving fast like Spirit Gonzalez. You end up with a demon. You understand? Watch this. Give me Proverbs 4 verse 24. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 24. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 24. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. You see that thing? This is a commandment. He says, put away far from he says, put away from thee a forward mouth, meaning a disrespectful mouth, and, per, and, and perverse lips put far from thee. Because a lot of the times, a slick mate, they're very good with the tongue. The sex is good, they're good with the tongue. They're, that's the, all they have to offer. And guess what? When you challenge them, get, when you challenge, guess what? What's going to happen is that when you have a disagreement, obviously, the sister is going to call you a B, is going to call you a B, A, Negro. That's what she's going to call you. She's going to call you a B, A, Negro. A B, A, Negro. Guess what? Because you're emotional, guess what you're going to do? A lot of the, a, a lot of the sleep nicks, they are very emotional. You understand? When you challenge them, guess what? They get so mad, they can kill you. Guess what? Those also, yes, they are very, very abusive, but they have the potential of being physically abusive, and the chances are very high, because they make decisions with their emotions. When they don't get what they want, they're going to do what? They're going to go outside of the realm of normality, normalcy to destroy it. You understand? Watch this. Now give me Proverbs 6, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Because the one, the, the, the brother, that slick Nick, that is that is verbally abusive, also is, is physically abusive. It's, it's, it's just, it, it, it just has not happened yet. But that spirit is in him also. If he's verbally abusive, he's going to be physically abusive. And I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Read it. Proverbs 6, verse 12. The book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. A naughty person. A wicked man walketh with a forward mouth. You see that thing? A naughty person, meaning what? This is a slick nick. A wicked man walketh with a forward mouth. You understand? He's got a dirty mouth. The mouth is filthy. Next verse. Watch this. The book of Proverbs of 6 verse 13. He winketh with his eyes. Because he's got gain. He's got gain. He winketh with his eyes. He's got many trains. He, this is a wicked slick nick. Go ahead. He speaketh with his feet. You see that part right there? He speaketh with his feet. So he's got a forward mouth. That forward mouth will, 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 will end into what? This is what it will lead to. He will speak with you with his feet. He's going to be kicking. 
is gonna be kicking you. You understand? Kicking in your stomach. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He teaches with his fingers. That's it right there. So he kicks you, you will be punching you. So a, 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 a wicked nick, that slick nick is got a forward mouth. Not only that, but he's abusive physically. You just got, you, you have not, the, 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 right, the right conditions have not been set for him to show his true colors. That nick that is hiding in there has not come out yet. It will require the right conditions to be activated for that Negro to pop out. So what you are reading here says, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. He's gonna punch you, slap you, kick you, to break your spirit even further. Mentally, they're gonna break you. Physically, they will break you as well. You, can, you will end up dead. You know? Fraudness is in his heart. You see that thing? Fraudness, evil. Rudeness is in his what is in his mind. You know, he devises mischief continually. Mm -hmm. He sows discord. He's always causing problems. That's a slick nick. A slick nick always causes problems. He says he sows discord. There's always something wrong with the brother. Slick nick. That's a slick nick. These are characteristics here. So let me put a disclaimer. You brothers, you put a hand on any of these sisters. Listen, you're going to get handled. I'm going to tell you straight. You will get handled. You understand? And you sisters, a brother puts hands on you, that before you call me, you better call the police. You are married, a brother puts hands on you, call the police. If you don't call the police, guess what? He's going to continue to do it. They were, and the day we find out, both of you got to go. Because you, will, you would have what? You would have... You would have went out around leadership. You don't tell the leadership that, listen, this brother is abusing me. But before you tell me, make sure you call the police. Call the police to get the Negro locked up. Now then you call the leadership. Then you can call me and tell me, brother such and such is, a, is, is, is physically abusing me. I called the police on him. They took him. They locked him up. Then you give me a call. But if he does it, you don't say nothing. You understand? You keep quiet. Guess what? You also, you are speaking, you are giving me the finger. That's what you are doing. Because the classes is coming out for you to take precaution. We will not tolerate any brother to put the hand on the sister. You do it, you're going to jail. You do it, your sister don't report it, you're going to end up dead. Because guess what? You are teaching him that what he's doing to you is okay. And you don't call your father to you say, listen, this Negro is doing such and such to me. That's why the slick Nick will tell you, no, don't tell leadership everything, so on and so on. Listen, the most like God is such you here for what? For, far, for a father to be over you. To make sure that these type of things, because the slick Nick knows we don't tolerate BS up in here. But the slick Nick, guess what they will do? They will tell you that. They will plant that thing in your head. And before they plant it, they're not going to do it immediately. They're going to wait. Just during the waiting process is the sex. They must mentally break you. Then when they start to punch you up the face, up the head, guess what? You're not going to report it. You're not going to say nothing until that man kills you. You understand? And guess what? When we find out he got to go, you got to go. So, but if you tell, if you, if you, if you pick up the phone and tell me, Listen, he locked up, he put his hands on me, I called the police on him. Then you call me. He got to go, you will stay in the camp. Why? Because you're following counsel. You understand how serious this is. Then both of you don't got to go. He can he will go by himself. He'll go to jail. You're going to jail, my friend. You understand? And we never coming back. No. Watch this. Um go back to Sarak. Uh, give me Sarah 23, verse 10 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For as a servant that is continually beaten shall not be without a, a blue mark, so he that serveth and nameth God continually shall not be faultless. So now it says, you are continually beaten, you're not going to be without a blue mark. That's why you're going to what? 
the blue mark is physical. We're gonna see physical marks and all of that on you. But another thing is, emotionally, you are being you are being what your spirit is messed up. Verbally, you are being verbally abused and emotionally and spiritually abused as well. Because verbal, spiritual, and mental, they all go together. Then you get the physical abuse. But here's another one. Some brothers, they will what? They will say, no, me, I don't want my wife to work. Well, that's fine. That's fine. As long as, as a sister, you've got skills. Make sure you've got skills. You understand? You must have skills as a sister. Because some brothers, they will say that not because they are doing it for noble purposes that are like our father. They're not because they are following the systems of our forefathers. No. They are doing it so that they can what? They can financially abuse you. They can abuse you financially. They, they will financially abuse you where you don't have nothing. You don't have anything of your... You don't have anything. You don't have no money, no nothing. They will financially abuse That's financial abuse. Because you don't got no skills. You can't do anything. That's why the Proverbs 31 classes, they are very important for you sisters to have skills. So that you don't hook up with a slick nick who, yes, he's got a job. You understand? He's got a good job. He can pay for this and that. He can take care of the house. And he says, you know, sis, you don't have to work and all of that. While he's doing what? He's financially abusing. That's why, give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs 31. That's why you sisters, you need to have the skills. Okay, Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 18. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 13. Mm -hmm. He seeketh wool and flex and worketh willingly with her hands. You see that thing right there? It says she seeketh wool and flex and worketh willingly with her hands. You understand? It's just unfortunate because those are some of the things that I picked up. You understand? These are some of the things that I picked up for those that are no longer with us. That's the spirit that I picked up, by the way. A slick name. You see, whenever the scriptures come out, you can pick up things. You can just keep quiet and watch. Some of us, we pick up those things. We see it. All praise to the Lord. We see stuff like that. Read that part again. Verse 13. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with the hands. And worketh willingly with their hands. We see stuff like that. That's why when we are start to talk about, you know, you know, sisters, they need to have skills and all of that. Some brothers, they feel uncomfortable about that. You know why? Because they're realizing that that means this woman, she also going to have, she also going to be able to have a skill that I'm no longer going to, I'm no longer going to be physically abusive to her or verbally abusive to her, or emotionally abusive to her, because guess what? I control all the funds. I control access to the funds. I'm the one that decides everything. Yeah, that's fine. You're the man of the house, but don't be a simp. You must cherish and nourish your wife. Also, you would want your wife to have a skill, like our forefather Tobit and our foremother, and now when Tobit was blind, guess what? She held him down because she had skills. So when you don't want your wife to get skilled, you 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 are a slick nick. You the devil. Because guess what? You're going to financially abuse that sister. So sisters, you must watch stuff like that. You hear brothers be, it's fine if if you you know you've got skills, you understand? And even if you are home, let's say you are home, there's something that you are doing. There's, there's some kind of a skill that you, you are doing to bring some kind of a finances in and some, or something like that. And if there's, that's not necessary, which is also fine, but always always make sure that you have a skill. That's why he has a reader part again, verse 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 13. She seeketh wool and flex and worketh willingly with her hands. And worketh willingly with her hands. Watch this. Jump down to the stage. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Pray. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Next verse. Come on. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own work 
praise her in the gates. You see that thing? And he says, give her of the fruit of her hand and let her own works praise her in the gates. Meaning what? The sister got skills. This sister got skills right here. This sister right here, she got skills. You understand? Watch this. I'm going to close it out on this one. Okay? Because we covered the verbal, the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, and the financial abuse. Watch this. Mm -hmm. This is the one right here. Who are you? My name is a pimp named Slickback. <laughs> 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 Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Okay. Who are you? My name is a pimp named Slickback, and I believe I may have misplaced some merchandise at this residence. A merchandise. He misplaced the merchandise at this residence. Guess who the merchandise is? The position. So he's abusing track 3624 on this wife. Okay. And I believe I may have misplaced some merchandise at this residence. There she is. Bitch, I hope you got the money to cover this. You see that thing? Verbal abuse. This little vacation you've been taking. Now hold up, Slickback. No, that's a pimp named Slickback. That's what I said, Slickback. No, no, it's a pimp named Slickback. Like a tribe called Quest. You say the whole thing. A <laughs> pimp named Slickback. It can be called you Slickback for short. No, nigga, I'm a pimp named Slickback. Crystal, who is this person? Nigga, are you deaf? I'm a pimp named Slickback. Come on, bitch, now. You see that? Verbal abuse. Verbally abusive. Okay? A pimp named Slickback. Could I please have a minute? A minute? <laughs> Let us pray the pimp's prayer. Lord, please pray for the soul of this bitch and guide my pimp hand and make it strong, Lord, so that she might learn a whole place. Amen. Amen. Yes. You see that thing? Verbally abusive will lead to physical abuse. That's what we read in Proverbs 6, verse 12. You understand? Amen. Yes. Damn. Indiana Jenkins. I didn't know we were still whooping, niggas. Fine. Bitch, you got 45 seconds and I'm leaving. 44. 43. 42. Time's up, bitch. I am leaving. No, daddy, wait, wait. And guess what? The slick Nick, he's going to be driving your car living in your house while you go out to work while he's in the house say the the main lion they got the compound you see what she's doing <laughs> so at this point the sex is good and guess what mentally you have been you have been broken mentally now you understand they've broken you she'll be back Thing I learned though. Come back. Wait. <laughs> run, bitch, run. She sure can run in those heels. I can't go to school. I can't get no real. Uh, Mr. Dubois. My name is a pimp named Slickback, and this, sir, is an intervention. An intervention? Your friends uh, have reason to believe that you are suffering from chronic bitch dependency. That's it right there. Now, this is a, is a different class which I will have. This is going into the, the, this is the simp. You see, the brother, he's a simp now. The pimp named Slickback, he's the solution provider. This right here, this is a simp. Okay? Mr. Du Vincent. Your friends uh, have reason to believe that you are suffering from chronic bitch dependency, Mr. Dubois. <laughs> Whew, give me first Ezra. Give me first Ezra chapter four real quick. This is um previews to the next class that's coming. Uh first Ezra chapter four. 
verse 26. Read that. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and have become servants for their sakes. Really? Many also have perished, have erred and sinned for women. Because this, these are simps. This is a simp. A yes, simp that is now addicted to the coochie. He cannot pull himself out of it. May I call you, Tom? Is this some kind of joke? So you see, my dearest Riley, it is this instinctive and burning need to procreate between a man and a bitch that not only keeps the human race going, but also fuels many important industries such as my very own. So what do you think about homies over homies? Is that something at Dennis? I, I don't know what that is. Homies. Tom, bitch dependency is no laughing matter. Addiction to a bitch can fuck with your friends. <laughs> Read verse 26 again. <laughs> first, first book of Ezra chapter 4 verse 26. Yea, many they be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. Come on. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Your health and scary and laughing matter. Addiction to a bitch can fuck with your friends, your health, and scary enough even your money. This is a simp, okay? It's a disease, Tom. Wait, what was your name again? Well, thank you for asking. My name, homies over hoes, is a sentiment that a pimp named Slickback can co-sign, Riley. I mean, don't get me wrong. A pimp named Slickback will put a lot of things over a hoe. Money over a hoe? Always. Brand new gators over a hoe? Absolutely. A Turkish sandwich with just tomato? Guaranteed. But homies? Oh, no. A pimp named Slickback don't do shit for the homies. Let me reiterate. Don't do shit for the homies. Unless the homie want to walk that stream again. Well, thank you for asking. My name is a pimp named Slickback. Wait, a pimp? Named Slickback, yes. Please say the whole thing, if you would. Yes, that includes the up-hemp named part. Yes, Tom, every time. Look, Mr. Up-hemp named Slickback. No need for the mister. I, I don't think I need any help from someone like you. And by <laughs> someone like me, you mean a pimp? A bad guy? Huh? Look, I'm not trying to insult you. I just don't approve of what you people do to women. Ocean has gone out of your marriage, and perhaps you're not providing enough excitement for it. It's a normal thing in long-term relationships. And you can help me fix it? Hell no, nah, I'm gonna help you make that bitch behave. She wants excitement, she can take her ass to the movie. Oh. <laughs> oh. So I'm wrong. So I'm messed up. Well, which one of us is the one missing a bitch, Tom? You don't see me running around looking for a bitch. I know where all my bitches are, thank you. Bitch, Tom. You don't see me running around looking for a bitch. I know where all my bitches are, thank you very much. Bitch, where you at? I'm out here getting your money. That's what the hell I thought. Thank you, Grandma. Now look at you, bitchless. Sans beach, as the French in France would say. Surveillance center. Why does a pimp need a surveillance center? Included in your retainer fee is state-of-the-art bitch surveillance. Quiet Storm here has been monitoring your wife's conversations and emails. Daddy, I've got transcripts of all the conversations today. No mention of Usher. I'm hacking into her email now, but this computer is running a bit slow. Perhaps if we didn't have dial-up... Bitch, don't start with that we need another computer shit again. You say that shit every time a new iMac comes out. You ain't slick. You better make that deep boy work, bitch, and stop playing with me. Yes, Daddy. Did you know that at least 75% of bitches suffer from some kind of hearing loss? This alarming statistic means that more likely than not, talking isn't the most effective way to communicate with a bitch. That's when you have to hit her. Whoa, what? Okay, we don't advocate for that garbage. But what I want to show you, brothers, is this is a topic for another class, okay? We'll talk about, we'll deal with this. Strong language and all that, okay? Disclaimer. Okay, um, I'm gonna end the class right here. I'm gonna end it here, okay? I don't wanna add more to this, all right? Um, let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and say, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
after the same manner also he took the cup and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This to ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praise to the most high.